Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. We live in a time where there is such appetite for expansion and there's nothing wrong with that. We love expanding. It's a proof of growth. But sometimes we can be carried away in the euphoria of the, the, the sociological effect of expansion and miss out on territorial impact where we are unable to, to live out the fullness of God's expectation as a portion to a territory it was jesus that taught us in matthew chapter 5 from verse 14 to 16 matthew 5 14 to 16 this is what jesus said he was teaching and he said ye are the light of the world now when you read and try to understand what jesus is saying just with head knowledge it can be very deceptive because you see the speakings of god is such that he speaks to men when he's speaking to one man he speaks to the nation in him are you getting the point now i told you that when god speaks to us we must learn the character of god's communication i've taught it here again and again in koinonia that number one when god speaks to you he never speaks as though he's speaking to a man the first thing we need to understand about the speakings of God, I'm just digressing to help us understand. God never speaks to men as though he's talking to men. He speaks to men as though he's talking to himself. Number one. Number two, God's communications are prophetic. The relevance of his words always transcend the individual who is hearing it. The individual hearing that word is only a representation of all those who will be benefactors of that word god never speaks to a man and then limits the blessing of that word to that individual alone he sent a word to jacob and then that word lighted upon israel god always speaks to nations in men are we learning now so every time god speaks to you sometimes you see that the word is heavy because he's speaking in nations through you and if we do not understand the speakings of God, we will carry mandates that were not part of his scope of dealing with us, thinking because you had it. God can speak to me, for instance, and say the vision he has given this ministry is replicating the fullness of God's life across the earth. And I can walk in the deception believing that it simply means that I will pioneer the move of God in every nation. No, when God was speaking, he was speaking to you in me. Are we together now it is through that prophecy that mandate comes to pass now if you do not understand this dimension of God's speakings you will end up in error his rating for men is global prophetically but experientially he deals with men territorially learn this the church in Pagamos the church in Smyrna the church in philadelphia not the church in the world when the spirit of god began to speak in revelations from where we would get some of these things he says right the communication was to the whole world but he broke it down to several churches he would come to this church and commend them 
I have weighed you. I have seen what you have done across that territory. A and B and C is what you have done in alignment to my purposes. D and E, you are in defiance to my precepts. Here's my advice. Correct yourself. Otherwise, because of your disalignment, you and that territory will suffer certain things. His system of marking was territorial. It was never generic. He did not generalize his probing. He went to the churches one by one. The church in Pagamos. The church in Philadelphia. The church in Smyrna. The church in um, you know, Ephesus. And so on and so forth. Kingdom advance is territorial. It is true that we are the light of the world. It is true that we are a city that is set on a hill. But then we must understand that this king priest dimension is such that God places men in territories. When God wants to promote men, he promotes men by supplying three things. Number one, a greater dimension of illumination. I'm, I'm touching on many things now. The first way God promotes men is by opening them to deeper access understanding the secrets and the mysteries of the kingdom the moment the portals of the heavens the portals of revelation are open to you higher and greater than that which you have seen and known then it's a sign of promotion in the spirit number two grace that anointing that agency capacity in the spirit is multiplied unto you and then number three there is an increase and a portioning of greater physical territories not just spirit, spiritual territories alone god lifts men by increasing the span and the influence of their territory are we together acts chapter 1 verse 8 very popular scripture jesus was teaching having resurrected he was having his last session with the disciples who would now be apostles before he would leave and then they asked him a question they said will you at this time restore the nation of israel and he replied by saying it is not for you to know the times and the seasons that the father has put in his care then verse 8 says but ye shall receive power listen carefully after that the holy ghost is come upon you and you shall be not men of god witnesses witnesses unto me then he begins to apportion territories he would have said you will be witnesses unto me all over the world full stop but now he's teaching them because shortly he would be leaving and they would be the ones to start and he's telling them look 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 the goal is the utmost part of the earth but it will be broken into territories first jerusalem then judea then samaria and then it will expand to the utmost part of the earth the first crusade that happened after christ resurrected the bible says that something happened on the day of pentecost now peter was preaching and when peter began to preach in chapter 2 of acts the bible says that the men were caught to the heart listen carefully and then they said men and brethren what shall we do he said repent for the remission of your sins and you shall receive this promise this is the part i'm going to he said for this promise is for you are you saying now for your children oh dear look at this little boy for you for your children for your children's children then he now says as many as are far off even those that the lord will call sometimes you you, you think that the, the bible is too detailed why would god he would have just said this promise is for everyone after all joel already told us he said i shall pour out my spirit on all flesh so why tell us again it is to you your children children's children and to those who are far off as many as the lord will call god's dealings is territorial that means a true believer's assignment is to look at the whole world but to focus on the territory you have been apportioned that is where your ranking that is where your marking that is what authorizes you to be apportioned new spheres both in the spirit and physically our obsession for more our obsession for increase sometimes robs us from the capacity to be faithful write this down 
our mandate as matured believers is to keep the ordinances of God alive across our apportioned territories. Our mandate in terms of territorial impact is to be preservers of the ordinances of God to ensure that every territory has a representation of the presence, the power, the system, the glory of God in that territory. If we fail to carry this out, then we have failed woefully. Listen again, that our mandate as matured believers with respect to kingdom advance is not just to be preachers, not just to be prosperous, that's important, not just to build churches and ministries, but that we become custodians and preservers of the ordinances of God within the territory that has been apportioned to us. That means there is a dimension of God he never wants to be lost in Zaria. Listen carefully. There is a dimension of God he never wants to be lost in Nigeria. There is a dimension of God he never wants to be lost in Jos, in Kogi State. And those who are mandated to be preservers of those ordinances are believers not just those who advance and win souls but we are like spiritual librarians mandated to make sure that there is a system that preserves the ordinances of God this in my opinion is one of the biggest mistakes of the Western Church they they've, they lost a part of their assignment they were obsessed with expansion and they forgot that they were mandated so there was a generation that lost touch with another generation and everybody now is guessing his opinion there is a curriculum of a god that has been apportioned to that territory and it was within the power of all the men of god within that dispensation to walk with the holy spirit and to preserve that truth when a dimension of God apportioned to a territory is lost, they cannot host certain dimensions of Him. The church in Nigeria is a wonderful place. You know that I love the church. I love the body of Christ. But I think that we have to trust God in this time and in this season to our idea of kingdom advance is in many ways faulty and we must trust God together as a united body to correct ourselves because there is this obsession for expansion and there's nothing wrong with that but it looks to me like our concept of kingdom advance is establishing our presence is in as many territories as possible whilst there is a dimension of that we are largely missing it because the idea is not just to establish our presence as the man of god or the denomination our idea is to make sure that in every territory there are men who represent portals for kingdom advance that there be no territory that is barren of a true apostolic and prophetic community that represents the individuals who can host God to his expectation within a territory. If we fail to do that, we have missed a lot. If you're understanding me, say amen. One of my greatest fear in life is finding out that I did not live my life and I did not do ministry to God's expectation. It is a very tragic state because the Bible says that our works will be tried with fire. Are we together now? Yes. Tonight, tonight is, 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 more, is more like a minister's conference. It's a challenge to believers and everybody, but the challenge is, is for those who have been trusted with some measure of spiritual influence over people, groups, territories 
we must trust God for understanding on how kingdom advance happens. There is too much guessing in the body of Christ and everybody believes he is right. But our results are showing that there is inefficiency. There is inefficiency somewhere. There are activities going on. There are programs going on. Conferences going on. And nothing is wrong with those things in themselves. Except that the heart of God's intent is seldom being communicated. And that calls for a very serious review of our approach to kingdom advance. It is God's desire, John chapter um, 15 now and verse 8 that we bear fruit and that our fruit abides meaning your fruit can be lost are we together we have lost several foundational precepts as simple as how to know who is saved and who is not is a serious problem for believers that's a sign that something is wrong with the church that we have lost that ability to be able to see the clarity on who is lost and who is saved the average believer does not know what to do with a new convert is that true the moment you bring a new convert to a believer and say please um, i'm trusting you with the destiny of this brother or this sister you will be shocked to find out that that person may even be a pastor in church that that person may even be a deacon that person may be a worker a leader having been around the things of god for many years sitting down under spiritual leaders but not knowing what to do say well i don't know what to do with this person what is step b after giving your life to Christ how do ordinary believers become spiritual men do we know well enough to be committed to someone that you can give someone who just got born again and they trust him and say look in three weeks we should be able to see certain things happen in this life listen let me tell you the truth if we do not re-examine this I truly believe that a few years from now the lapse of our being out of touch with these spiritual realities will become clear with all humility and with all love for the body of Christ look at the caliber of we pastors and men of God that are handling the pulpit we are largely ignorant people ignorant of the precepts of God ignorance of the methodology of God we just went through a denominations foundation school or a denomination school of ministry or a denominations requirement for ordination and all of a sudden oil is poured upon you and you are granted access to the souls of hundreds thousands and millions of people who submit their minds and their spirits to the mentorship of a confused person who only had the privilege to hold a mic and we keep teaching them and they swallow everything we teach hook line and sinker the life of the church today is a testament of our inefficiency as men of god the average believer does not have an understanding of kingdom advance at all we don't know we don't care we are not even interested what do you do do you know that's why look at the body of christ the gap between extremely anointed people and those who are squallowing around the ground is too wide what happened are you getting what i'm saying in a whole territory you may find just two or three people at the upper levels spiritually and then that's all right but the next set of people will be so far apart i have seen churches where in a whole church only maybe two or three of the spiritual leaders are truly anointed or on fire out of a church of maybe 30 pastors 27 of them when they come and hold the mic then you see on the board pastor this apostle this and you say my god who called this guy to ministry what is he saying opinions philosophies cunningly devised fables are we together now and look at the quality of men and women 
who are being produced. It's a disaster that requires a quick rescue. Many believers do not know God. Many believers do not know the Holy Spirit. Many believers do not know the voice of the Holy Spirit. Many believers do not know scripture. Many believers do not even understand the system of God. Many believers go to church, I agree. Many believers take communion, I agree. Many believers join in general church prayer, I agree. But very few believers have risen in spiritual orientation. I'm not talking of men of God. I'm talking of people who are healthy because of an atmosphere that is healthy. The, the kind of threat that the gate of hell is supposed to receive from the church has reduced grossly. Grossly. We see the ease with which darkness looms around territories. As though there are no believers there, but the Bible says you are the light of the world. It didn't say you are the noisemakers. It didn't say you are the discussers. You are the light. You bring illumination. You are a city that is set on a hill. I think it's Philippians chapter 2. When you read from verse 13 to 16, it starts by saying, Do everything without complaining or arguing. I'm sure I'm right. And then it says that he will be blameless. Um, okay, for God it. That he may be blameless and harmless. The sons of God without rebuke. In the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. What is your mandate? Among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Next verse. It says holding forth. 16. Holding forth the word of life. Holding forth the word of life. Not cunningly devised fables. Not the discussions of men. Are we together? We have lost too many things in the body of Christ. We have lost power. We have lost a voice. No. We, we have to. We have been downgraded to a realm of Scientology and carnality. There must be a drastic upgrade. Otherwise, something will be wrong. We will not know the difference between spiritism and Christianity or Scientology and logic or some kinds of philosophical things. Are we blessed? Preservers of the ordinances of God in a territory. Mandated to make sure every generation tastes the reality of the life of God. For in your presence there is life everlasting. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord. I There is life everlasting. I will reverence you, Lord. When John was caught up in the Isle of Patmos, John began to explain to us what he saw. And among many other things, John said he had a voice. And when he turned to see that voice, he saw seven lampstands. Listen carefully. And then John said, in the midst of the lampstand, there was one like the Son of Man. And he began to describe various attributes of him. And then it was God himself who began to give John that interpretation. He says that those lampstands represent the church, the ecclesia, God's body. The lampstands that Christ is found in the midst of them. That light that is also a city set on a hill that should never, never be confused. He says it is the church. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you the truth. Christianity 
is not in danger. Listen carefully. Church is not in danger, but the ordinances of the spirit that make men mighty is in danger. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The ordinances, the secrets of God that is a portion to transform men from ordinary people to make men of power and relevance is in danger. We scarcely understand the secrets of God. The pathway that any believer can follow and become a man of grace, a man of power and relevance. I want to share with you very briefly because I want us to pray. Six ways that the precepts of God can and should be preserved in a territory. Hallelujah. Wow. I'm seeing fire in the spirit. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing fire like a volcano. That's what I'm seeing in the spirit. A volcano in the spirit. Shabbat she goes kind of like a volcano. Please, can another drummer sit down? Please let this gentleman go for somebody. This man is sensitive. I'm still seeing this fire inside, outside. I'm seeing it. It's like a volcano. When, when you see God doing these kinds of things, it's, it's not show, it's not show. He's bringing witness, he's bringing witness to the spirit of man. Because the word of God must have an agency for performance. He's, he's working on people. I'm seeing like a volcano rising and exploding. Then the fire is dropping on people. This is what I see in the spirit. This is what I see in the spirit. It's making us witnesses, testaments. Listen, let me tell the truth. There are precepts of the spirit that cannot be lost. We must trust God. We must become true spiritual custodians of these things. Otherwise, a generation is in danger. The death of a man of God should not end the move of God. There are many men of God, we talk about them. They left with the secrets because there were no men to receive. They left with the secrets. Elisha died. Till today, there are dimensions that would have been seen. Gehazi was not positioned to receive. God, God sees my heart. How that I desire that we become spiritual. 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 Not just supernatural. Spiritual. You must, you must understand the realm of the spirit. And sustain capacity to interact with that realm. Otherwise you will not do much. I promise you. That you must, you must learn how to walk with God such that you become an envoy of his presence it's not just a call it's not just a unique call to a man it's not just a unique call to a man it is the product of consistently following a pathway there is a pathway that produces that effect it's not an exclusive preserve of particular men there is a path you can follow that leaves the trace of god's presence it's like a perfume so every time you find expression, there is no man born of a woman that comes under the influence of that presence that will not be affected. That's the realm where doubt dies. That's the realm where all kinds of suspicion go away. You, you are not trying to show your anointed. Your presence always introduces a reality. You are showing men that you are standing in an interface between two realms. 
and for as long as you are there you open them up to experiences that their current faith level cannot afford them this is not just talk 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 all this empty talk we keep mocking ourselves the bible says for i did not come to you with the excellency of speech it is not just about oratory no this is not grammar this is the reality the bible paul calls it the mystery of godliness that god can be embodied domiciled in an individual who was born of flesh and blood but produce an effect that is strangely supernatural no man is born with the anointing no man is born with the anointing no man is born with spiritual power men follow pathways is an ancient path that has been lost there's too much talk too much grammar too much preaching too much listening to every man of God's message and picking out what will make you stand out on stage it, let me tell you the truth if we do not trust God to touch reality we will keep wasting our time educating ourselves do you know what what the average young preacher does hold on what the average young man not just your young, young believer who loves god does is he finds the tapes of five six seven eight men of god around the world and just puts them together and listens to them and there's nothing wrong with that but the purpose of listening to it is to try to synergize enough revelation to give him capacity to speak well so that he will not be ashamed that's a joke if that's what you think brings power and opens the heavens over a man I is a is a big joke a big joke the realm of the spirit is not an educational classroom it's a place where men are made genuinely there there are there are there are capacities apportioned for people on grounds of working with the holy spirit only the holy spirit gives that ranking nobody you can pretend you have it many people pretend they have it but when the door settles down you hear the testimonies guy we have lost something serious we must trust god to be trusted with grace to preserve the ordinances of god otherwise some of the young believers coming up the only thing we can give them as a heritage is born again and then they get born again and they don't know what to do and it is this same confused us that have been ordained week in week out everybody is a general overseer everybody is a president everybody is an apostle everybody is a prophet everybody is a pastor hilarious ordinations happening left right and center and everybody is just holding the mic and we are as confused as those who are trying to teach I say this out of love for the body but we must return we are losing something we are losing something very powerful we are losing something the ordinances the precepts of the spirit there is a spiritual formula that men are subject to we are losing it in the name of ministry in the name of globalization in the name of making sure we expand no sir the average believer does not even know whether his prayer is answered or not. The average believer, does. the only thing we have done is that every time we pray in tongues for a long time and dissipate spiritual energy, there is a consolation based on that energy. So it is based on that pain we go through that we believe it is answered. What, what sort of an, an education is that? The average believer studies the Bible to ease himself or herself from the guilt, the personal guilt that comes from messages every Sunday that you must be spiritual. It is not a personal appetite. It's not a search. If, if that guilt were taken away from us, we would throw the Bible in a heartbeat. That's why we love using any other thing, job or whatever. It's only because we are free and everybody knows we are free so we can't say we are not serious so when there is a legitimate crown then we excuse it how the precepts of God are preserved in a territory I 
our sensitivity largely very dull largely very dull any and everything happens around us and there is no acumen no perception we see and hear things we do not have strength and capacity to interpret so we become victims of anything and anybody who presses a little more than usual we we accepted that that person is being called into the ministry now, number one the first way listen carefully that the purposes of God are both established and preserved in a territory like our territory Zaria here for instance is prayer write it down prayer the first way the purposes of God are established upon a territory and also preserved is prayer. Warfare and intercession. Write it down. A lost act in the body of Christ. Genuine warfare and intercession. Let me tell you something. If we ever have a generation that laughs at warfare and intercession, that's the generation that will not live to hand over to another. I promise you. I promise you our our spiritual ignorance is tilting us gradually to downplay the role of spiritual warfare and intercession over setting the atmospheres and the climates of territories to allow that territory host God brothers and sisters it takes prayer it takes genuine warfare and intercession for the heavens to be open over a territory enough for the purposes of God to be established warfare Ezekiel chapter 22 it's a long reading 23 to 31 but the verse of emphasis is verse 30 Ezekiel 22 please help us media Ezekiel chapter 22 And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, long reading, quickly please. Just go to verse 30. Because at the, at the way we are going, we are going to waste too much time. And I sought for a man among them. Now this was God, angry with a territory. That's why what I wanted us to read, but because of time we will just look at 30. God was angry with a territory and was about to pour his indignation and his judgment. And God said, that mercy dimension of me was still there. But I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land. For what? For the land, not for the church. I'm talking about taking over territories, preserving the precepts of God over a territory. A man that will stand for the land so there are men that can stand for the land not just their churches that because of their presence and the business they do with God certain things can happen to territories they don't even know why it came and how it came but a man stood for a land that I should not destroy it but I found did he say I did not find human beings they were human beings many but I found none. That man built in capacity and understanding. The ministry of prayer. Let me tell you this. Believe me. Hear me, Church of the Lord Jesus Christ, everywhere, here in any nation. But more specifically in Zaria. If we stop praying in Zaria because of some kind of spiritual laziness, you will be shocked. The way darkness will prevail over the city are we together the ministry of prayer is one of the foundational tenets that must be preserved in every generation i don't care whether the believer is going to be a man of god or a civil servant or a politician the ministry of prayer must be indoctrinated in every believer he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint not just need driven prayers alone 
but we must graduate from realms of just praying give me tea give me bread to taking over lands that because of your presence in the territory you subdue the controlling powers the powers that mold the mindsets of people the powers that are responsible for prevalent tragedies over a nation that you come into a city and find accidents anyhow all kinds of things anyhow and you realize that you have been made a king and a priest over that territory and part of the ministry of your priesthood is advocacy that you go before God and you stand face to face with the controlling powers that's what men did in the Bible Abraham stood in for Sodom and Gomorrah are we together preserve the family of Lot the wife chose the way she wanted Joseph stood in preserve certain things Daniel stood in preserve are you not men who preserve the purposes of God your generation the ministry of warfare and prayer the ministry of warfare Ephesians chapter 6 when we read from verse 10 to 19 the Bible tells us listen carefully the Bible tells us that um, we should be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might then it says we should put the full armor of God are we together then it says how that we we do not war against principalities and powers but against um, rulers and flesh and blood but principalities and powers and all of that it begins to tell us that in every territory these demonic structures exist hold on let me preach to educated people you know sometimes because we have gone to school because we are rich small money small job we and sometimes innocently and truthfully i hear preachers downplay the presence of controlling powers over cities simply because at the present they are doing well let me tell you something satan is many things a fool is not one of them are you hearing what i'm saying satan is defeated satan is old satan is several things but a fool is not one of them he has the advantage of age time he has studied mankind different species of people have lived upon this earth he has had an advantage of one-to-one -one experience satan has existed before several dispensations before adam's dispensation that brought us into the sea every territory has controlling powers every territory has controlling powers if you see the purposes of God prevailing in that territory brothers and sisters it's not because the controlling powers are not there an agency in the spirit a system has been lifted in the heaven that has clamped down the activities of darkness enough to allow the purposes of God find expression that's why I said if we stop praying or if we concentrate on childish immature prayer lord give me tea tomorrow again oh god i forgot to ask for bread yesterday there is a place where you ask for your needs but notice how jesus taught us to pray our father who art in heaven we reverence you after reverencing him the next thing is your agenda your kingdom come your kingdom come your kingdom come upon a land upon a territory listen the concept of prayer chains the concept of prayer groups the concept of prayer cells in territories must never end are you hearing what i'm telling you yes now the the, the challenge with many people is that the moment people start praying carnality comes in and they are looking who is the leader among these three people what is the name of this ministry of four of us I don't know who taught us that prayer groups prayer cells prayer chains there should be some structure of leadership but you know we have this mentality and and especially some of us who are coming up are mentoring this wrong thing from some of us men of god the moment people start praying everybody is obsessed about who is the leader who has the protocol to follow him if if we do like that then the devil is going to destroy us in every city and territory in Zaria there should be prayer portals that's how the kingdom works I'm a good student of revivals that's how it should work 
in Samaru there should be units of men and women praying in Dogo there should be people there has to be representations of the kingdom sending an incense of prayer on a daily basis that's why I thank God for all the groups scattered around and notice that's what Satan hates the moment there are people praying some kinds of agitation must arise from anywhere preserve us of the ordinances of God gone are the days where churches start as prayer groups now churches start as intentional organized platforms for the enjoyment of the man of God are we together that before a man of God starts ministry he has sown his clothes for one year are we together the offering basket has been made tight envelope is in is, is intact what is it we better be careful this joke that we keep joking with ourselves every correct ministry starts as same it doesn't let me tell you most men of God that are being used mightily by God today ask them their intention was never ministry they were men who made themselves available when God called them they went back and cried and said God can you use somebody else God will say you are the person you can choose to say no but I'm not using any other person you are the one I will use but now you see the appetite with which we rush into this thing and the devil doesn't he, he doesn't stop us because there's whether we're in it or outside it's, it's, it makes no difference to him we are still equally ignorant prayer that's how this ministry started prayer every day fire on the altar and I'm not talking of the kind of prayer that is for one hour and you talk for 60 minutes and you say let's, let's thank God that's Bible study prayer should be an intense time of engaging in the spirit only to be interrupted shortly to establish a few things strengthen the understandings of the people the fire continues this is the kind of prayer that can host heaven in eternity let me be honest with you many territories have a lot of repentance to do many families have a lot of repentance to do the prayer lives of many people are under attack when the devil finds out that there's no hope of you backsliding in prayer he tells your prayer to become a selfish one so you are praying for hours but you are making minimal minimal spiritual progress i insist prayer chains prayer groups there are many of you here that the body is in your hand it's not carnality and it is not ministry either when you let me teach you something every time you get to a new land before you get accommodation find somewhere where you can pray scan around the back of one tree shout and hear whether it disturbs anybody if that's what dedicate it as an altar to start with don't go around and say where can i get a hotel and all this rubbish no find a place to pray somebody will join you another person will join you the devil is in trouble once there are up to two people or three that can agree to be praying apostle but what is the name of the ministry it's not it doesn't have a name the ministry is traveling in the spirit until the purposes of god are portioned for that territory so it doesn't matter where you are the assignment is the same if you leave zaria for a three-week break and you are in kogi for that three week every demon and devil in Koki state will feel the fire when you return it doesn't matter someone else who is returning there so there's fire everywhere say everywhere but now you find out that some places are as cold as ice whereas some other places are on fire do you know whenever you travel for a ministry to a to a ministry the purpose is not just to go there to watch a superstar the purpose is to carry like a coal you go and fetch some of it are we together that's why when i see people come from other places i like laying my hands on them it's not just for showmanship so you carry something the goal is to take it back to your territory the same way we do in the physical when they want to teach an organization certain things and they can't sponsor all of them what do they do they pick one man is that true or a few people send them abroad for the training when they return back they teach the people not shine with it not shine with it this is where we are missing it train the people 
one of the biggest killers in ministry is tied to and that sense of control over men if we don't repent out of it you know i look at people and there is such an obsession to be the leader okay this group is the name is is, is, is um, salvation power intercessory group and i'm the one i'm the the, the i'm the chief uh, uh, coordinator of it that means i'm the one who prays more and all these ones are my children you start praying in two months everybody that comes here is your child including people like our mother here that came to all, all this this poor self-esteem that we have transferred into our prayer lives and ministries this title and an obsession for platforms is what is killing the move of god in many territories do you know there are people as students years ago there are people who had different prayer groups when when all of them were finishing they just left they've gone on other places doing great things but most of us you pray for two days and then the next thing you carry a piece of paper who is really the secretary among these five people we need to define it because the other day i didn't tell anybody to lead prayer and this other lady started leading. when did she join this thing before and you see we, we start politicizing it are you not from Madam? Me too, I'm from Madam. That one came, I don't say from Lagos. He said, We don't want to bring all these kind of things. And we kill the move of God with very frivolous, childish things. Another thing that kills prayer is love. No, not love, relationship. Hello? I keep saying it. There are people till today, they have no business loving anybody. Please hear what I'm saying all this thing of coming to the house of god for one month and you're already eyeing every sister every brother you are in love no sir this is not how we train people we train people to look for god first press into god have a testament a a track record then you can love but now everybody is, is just you, you come in two days you are praying people are closing their eyes praying and what you are doing is you are looking out for for who it is to marry i'm not saying god cannot use those platforms in fact god should use them are we together however your heart if the reason why you are in several prayer groups is to find a wife or find a husband you need to re-engineer and renew your mind and repent and ask for forgiveness and concentrate on the major reason why you are there first most people who become mightily used by god never go there to marry they go there to seek god they pray with all their heart and serve and one day while they are praying god will tell them you see this 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 lady it's even god that will tell them my son look you have been serving me sincerely this this one that you are serving you need a helper i said god i can continue god, it's me that i say you need a helper but now we are the ones bombarding the gate of heaven a prayer request full of oh god won't i marry and god what have you done for me you have not done anything nobody has been saved as a result it's a scam to come to the house of god you are not contributing anything and the next thing you want to take and and usually it's god's best we want to take oh come on please are we blessed let me be honest with you church of the lord jesus christ let's return to the place of seeking god sincerely and passionately or coming to the house of God and everybody is checking what did this one this prayer group ah I like these suits that this one is wearing I know no. father your kingdom come in this territory there is darkness Lord we just noticed that 11 people died in nine months that means there is a spirit passing through that territory unhindered and all of a sudden one faithful day that spirit will hear a sound from the earth shaka as he's moving to high in Dogo, someone is taking it from there. Let me tell you how you drive spirits. You make the heavens unconducive. Don't laugh at what I'm telling you. I'm teaching you how this thing works. Because they will always live where there is fire and settle down. And wait for a backsliding territory and then return back. This is how many of those we admire today, that's how they were raised. They were never, Edrimi is here asking, those of you who were there when Koinonia, when he and I started, 
when you got born again in two weeks it will be as if you have spent one year in Christ because there was fire everywhere there still is but because we're a lot more organized now it is very difficult when people got there were people who would get born again filled with the Holy Spirit from day two they start prophesying and even with the prophesying they are not going anywhere because there are still demons to get out of there as they finish prophesying they go and humble themselves and sit down and learn but now someone gets born again after one month because of the gift of the spirit he prophesies she prophesies the next thing they start speaking to people they speak mistakes into the lives of people because they are seen correctly but the dynamics of interpreting spiritual things is not there and before you will now learn and grow you have misled several people gift is not maturity you need to stay with god no matter how you rush you must stay that fire that fire is the maker of men anybody that dodges fire don't trust him don't trust him you must be refined as of gold our desires and appetites must be put genuinely to seek God say amen, amen. prayer I'm encouraging you I'm encouraging the church in Zaria I'm encouraging the church everywhere there must be prayer units most ministries do it but many ministries what what they do is not really prayer unit it's just maybe home sales which is wonderful I, I, I don't have a problem with it do you know why we will not do it as koinonia because you are an extension of the ministry the goal is not Joshua Selman in every home the goal is the kingdom the power the glory of God your house can become an altar your small area can become an altar two of you three of you can begin to pray it doesn't matter that God started with you it doesn't need to have a name the name is prayer seven to nine five to six in the morning nine to ten every day or two days in a week or three days in a week you do this and see what begins to happen let me tell you what begins to happen the moment you pray there will first be silence one month two months you will start seeing physical agitations the demons that are resident in men will start reacting something is happening in the realm of the spirit your own loved ones will start fighting you for reasons you cannot explain and say look um you are becoming proud and you say no no sir i'm not because you are becoming proud the moment they say that remember spiritual intelligence you know it's not the individual you you respect the body but go back in the spirit and say satan i'm still there i know it's you jesus looked at peter and said satan get thee behind you and you go and continue and then one day let me tell you how god will announce that he has come to that territory a spectacular move of god will happen one day you will see people in a family and they are just sitting down watching football and the power of God breaks out in that house. Breaks out in a house where they hate the Holy Spirit. Guess who the first to be filled with the Holy Ghost will be? The Father himself. Shakata bakata. And you are wondering, my father? My father? Yes, your father. This controversial person who is so scientific. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's the one God. Your prayer the Holy Spirit has been eyeing him and on that day we have missed it there are many territories that are cold so the only way people can get some fire is when they rush and converge in particular places the place of convergence is important but the place of convergence should not be a remedy for lack of fire where you are it should be a place to come and receive a greater fire can you make a commitment in one minute that you will become an extension of the fire of God in your territory? Pray. Pray in one minute. Cast away lukewarmness. Some of us, our lives are under attack. We are seeing it, but we do not care. The grace for prayer zero. Every and anybody is distracting your prayer life. I'm busy, I'm busy. A deception by the pit of hell. Lord in the staff quarters, find 
a space through me. Lord, in prison, we represent an extension of that altar of prayer. Hallelujah. Listen, let your prayer be focused on impact, not titles. Impact, not titles. If you are here roaming around looking for people to start going to your small church, lock it down and go and start praying. Alone, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't invite anybody. Let them come and meet you praying. Shakata, kata, kata. Lekata, kata. And you are praying and God is watching you. My beloved son. No carpet. No canopy. No mic. No suit. No nothing. But a genuine desire to seek him. And God is saying I, I am watching. Listen. All this, all this running around. Am I a prophet or am I an apostle? Is nonsense. It is the place of prayer and work. There is nobody that starts ministry and start walking with God knowing who he is. Even if God tells you it will not look like that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? All this I am apostle. This just wait and see it will happen. You are joking. Nothing will happen. It is in the place of prayer. As that fire refines you. It starts drawing you to become something. And everybody starts saying this is the training of a prophet. Even you. You may mistake yourself for an evangelist. Because the only thing you did was crusade. But then it's eventually, as it's building you, you know that no, this training is not an evangelist training. Ah, why is this unusual? Ah, there are people who think they are called in, they are, some of you here seated, you are born prophets with the office of a prophet, but you have not seen one vision. Because it's not about the vision. Keep praying. Just continue. Just continue. You will argue with anybody and say, no sir, I'm not a prophet. Me, I, I know I'm a pastor because I'm a good teacher. You will find out that teaching is not even part of it. Just keep praying. The refiner's fire comes through that prayer. When your heart is being purged, are we together now? Flesh is being taken away. One day, you will begin to pray. And all of a sudden, you will find out that you will prophesy like Saul from morning till night and step into a strange dimension. Many people who are calling themselves many offices take it from me, they are wrong. They don't know. It is only the place of the dealing of the spirit that makes you, you say you are a pastor, who told you? Just because someone prophesied, he saw in part and he said so, he may be right, but he may not be it. No, don't say just because you saw a ring, you saw a hand, you say, I'm a prophet, I'm a prophetess, I'm an apostle. No, sir, don't flatter yourself. Let the place of prayer incubate you. When you come out fully, the name that you are will be shown, not just by titles, results, results, results will show who you are. If you are a prophet, don't tell us. Let the results show it. Show us the eye of the spirit you received in the place of prayer. Show us the acumen, the ability to perceive realities. That's what makes a prophet. Show us the ability to bring things down from the realm of the spirit. Don't come and talk jargons and waste our time. Show us the performance that comes based on the word of God. Show us the throne in heaven that backs that office. Don't say I'm an apostle. Show us the throne that backs you. Show us the keys of the territory that was given to you. We go around bragging, calling ourselves names, flattering ourselves and deceiving people and being deceived ourselves. Pray in one minute, Lord, a restoration of the grace for warfare and intercession. Praying over a land. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. Restore me back, oh God. 
to the ordinances of the fathers restore me back restore me back restore me back restore me back the ordinances that help men to walk with God Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I once saw a man of God that I knew years ago. When I shook that man, as soon as I shook him, tears filled my eyes. I was almost asking him, where did your fire go to? What happened to you? What made you cold like this? Who deceived you? What did you start listening to? Where did you go? Which association did you join? Restore my fire. Lift your voice and pray. Cry it from your spirit. Restore my fire. Shakata kata. Leketo satos kapriata. Restore my fire. Restore it, oh God. The destiny of a territory is at stake. The destiny of a territory is at stake. This is not the issue of being a man of God. This is not the issue of being in ministry. Preserve us of the ordinances of the Spirit. Daily prayers, daily prayers, daily prayers, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, without fail. Ongoing 
I'm in ministry. I know how busy ministry can be. Let me tell you, you need to love God beyond money and beyond members and beyond power to remain prayerful as a man of God. No matter, you can be leading a prayer movement. It's no guarantee that you pray yourself. You can pray whenever you are with the people. It's no guarantee. Many prayer, many men of God that lead prayer groups, I tell you, their own prayer lives is dying. I tell you this as a man of God. Because it is hard work for a man of God to be consistent in prayer and be in ministry. There are ladies that don't pray. Don't pray. Fashion is, is eating us up. I believe in fashion. Look good. But it's complete nonsense if you don't pray. Can we pray in the spirit just for one minute? Just, just to allow the Holy Spirit to bring this. There are gentlemen that don't pray. We are overconscious of ourselves. No, sir. Teach your children to pray. Teach your children to pray. Hallelujah. Please sit down. prayer preserve prayer in every territory preserve it in your house preserve it in your life preserve it everywhere don't let it go no matter who laughs at you no matter how western those of you listening from other nations of the world restore prayers back to your homes restore prayer back to your churches whether you are in America whether you are in London it doesn't matter where restore prayer back prayer has equal value everywhere whether you are rich or poor your personal comfort has nothing to do with your prayer life number two how are the ordinances of god advanced and preserved a regular convergence of believers within, within that territory the second way that the ordinances of God are not only transferred but preserved is that there must be a regular convergence of believers within that territory to be trained equipped empowered there is no territory that can preserve her spiritual heritage when there is no platform for a regular convergence of believers be it a regular church service be it a midweek service be it different interdenominational programs it doesn't matter there has to be a regular convergence there must be a platform where the believers within that territory keep in touch they are trained they are equipped they are empowered then they also receive the blueprint of god's current emphasis is one of the highest advantage of coming together when believers come together the whole territory can hear what god is doing now don't assume that because god moved in a particular way yesterday that's what he's still doing today When a territory dissociates itself from Psalms 133, a convergence for the purpose of being equipped, it is for this reason that God anointed some. He gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the equipping of those people within that territory. So what, what happens here every week is the will of God. A convergence of men and women. Are you seeing why when people begin to say it's not the issue of crowd, 
there, there is a joke are the people cheers the more the people within a territory that can converge to hear the precepts of God provided the dispensers of that truth are in touch with God is an advantage in the multitude of people is a king's honor the king there is not the man of God the king there is the king of kings in the multitude of people within a territory don't have a territory of five million people and the largest church in that territory is 300 people and you say it doesn't matter what else matters why didn't Jesus die for 12 people and say 12 people receive my salvation then any other person who is interested no he died for the whole world don't get into that mistake of resenting crowds just because there are people or there may be ministries that have crowds and maybe the men of God and the women of God may not be well positioned to supply them the kind of spiritual feeding does not mean that God is against crowd when you reject it it looks like you are being spiritual but that's been carnal anybody that knows God must love people Acts chapter 2 from verse 42 to 47 they continued Acts 2 and they continued look at me who are the day the community of believers within that territory they continued steadfastly consistently unbendingly in the rain in the sunshine convenient or not convenient the sad reality is that most people in the body of Christ have been indoctrinated that only when things become convenient for you there are people who come to church and now I believe in excellence but just a little heat somewhere they said I'm too I mean I'm I'm, I'm too I'm too ah, 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 ah. steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayers we are reading down to 47 and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles and all that believed were together and had all things in common and they sold their possession and their goods and parted them etc etc 46 and they continuing daily not even weekly the church of old they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking of bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart verse 47 praising God and having favor with all the people and what did God do who is the person who brings a crowd a man of God please get away from all that mistake of thinking men of God are using oratory you can invite animals by gimmicks not men men are not stupid a crowd of people cannot be a crowd of idiots there are people who are sensible and went to school when you see crowds God brought them don't get into that thing of saying people are just gathering just for entertainment no sir no sir there may be one of two exceptions but you don't generalize there are places God is doing mighty things this place is one of them the Bible says and the Lord added to the church how many daily such as should be saved so the multitudes of people that come are people sent by God to find salvation there must be a regular convergence when Satan wants to frustrate the purposes of God in a territory he starts bringing people and policies that try to frustrate the gathering of the brethren are you seeing that now that's why things like a crisis is very bad because among other things it puts fear in people and causes men to not be able to come together and to learn thank God for platforms technology has afforded greater opportunities today most ministries and most groups and platforms have social media presence for all those who are part of 
what God is doing in that ministry to connect and follow. There are all kinds of opportunities for growth. Number three. How is the kingdom advanced in a territory? How are the ordinances of God preserved in a territory? Ready? An open display of real miracles, signs, and wonders beyond the church walls. Let me tell you how God is institutionalized in a territory. An open display, not a private, quiet, secret, doubtful manifestation of his power. An open display of real genuine miracles, signs, wonders that are beyond the church wall. Out of all the miracles Jesus performed, please write it and look up. Out of all the miracles Jesus performed, less than one percent of them was done in the church is that true he was strolling one day and then he saw a dead body they were going out a woman was crying had lost her son had lost her husband and he said what's going on here and he said this woman is about to leave he stopped them there and then and brought the son back to life do you know that when a miracle happens and it is not known it doesn't bring God glory the glory God receives is in the announcing of what he has done I know most times people think it's an announcing of a powerful man of God our mother came here and shared testimony our brother here came and shared testimony of someone who has come back to life do you know what that does to you it strengthens your faith and then when the miracle happens in your presence it is beyond doubt that's why listen listen if you're a man of god here you must trust god for grace for instant performance of the word instant performance it is wonderful to go and come back two weeks with results but there is nothing more convincing than the optical eyes of a doubter watching god in action you saw it before during and after when Jesus finished declaring his, his um, call in Luke chapter 4, he told the guy with the withered hand, he said, for starters, to prove to you the hand of God is upon me, Mr. Man, stretch your hand. When he stretched his hand, that was beyond doubt. The highest that can happen to you is you will be criticized and hated, but I assure you God will be glorified an open display why do we need an open display of miracles within territories it creates convictions not just in the heart of church members in the heart of the community many communities do not believe in god because they have not seen him coming in an open display the day god anoints you and you stand and speak over a territory and say god revealed to me that in in five months they are going to tar this road and people laugh at you and say stupid pastor if you want cheap publicity go on air and all of a sudden a rich man comes within that territory and tars that road in five months you don't need to tell them god has done it the next time they see you that convicting power the day you now speak and say i saw death in this community they will not laugh at you again they do not take our word serious do you know why bloggers and journalists write everything about men of God because there has not been an open display of the efficacy of the power and the grace of God something that defies principalities and signs and wonders most of this open display is largely done in the south that's why there are hardly our fathers of faith there the, the kind of crowd that comes for their meetings the miracles that happen you will see people sitting on the street selling akara selling pap and watching people rise up from wheelchairs now let me tell you it does not matter how hardened you are if you see a real miracle you must go back and think about it you can choose to argue but the truth still remains the truth what has happened in your family to shut the mouth of those who are doubting those who have laughed at you and said koinonia every time you must trust god for an open display everybody say an open display that one day 
you step into the parlor and all of a sudden someone that is to go for surgery maybe your loved ones just because you stepped in there while they are busy criticizing a man of god on tv you look and say daddy the lord just said i should tell you that this cancer is gone and he loves their young boys i was with you i was i remember serving god in boys brigade when i was growing up while they are talking all that drama there is instant miracle and he touches his stomach he will first quietly go to the room and lock the door and say no no what is happening and within a short time the lord is glorified let me tell you what they'll start calling you uh, where is prophetess pastor evangelist we're about to pray is god saying anything that's a sign that god is working god is working something powerful in this time god is raising mighty men in our days he won't stop he won't stop till his church looks like him he won't stop no he won't stop till my life looks like him acts chapter 19 please quickly acts chapter 19 brothers and sisters we need a restoration of the anointing in the body of christ this anointing thing is not for showmanship the anointing is a silencer of doubters charles and francis hunter of blessed memory would always say that one miracle is worth a thousand words our noise is too much we need a performance of strange and extreme dimensions of the operation of the spirit that stretches people's unbelief until they no longer have a chance to disbelieve God. Acts chapter 19, verse 11. 11. And God wrought what kind of miracles? There are ordinary miracles. They are supernatural in themselves. But they are special miracles. By the hands of Joshua Selman. Verse 12. So that from his body. This is a very personal scripture for me. So that from his body we are brought to the sick handkerchiefs and aprons today we just use it out of showmanship a man of god just says hey, what did you say is wrong with you sir darkness is all over our house so bring this handkerchief i hold it we spit on it we rub it on our face people carry it back home like a charm one year after that handkerchief arrived home nothing happened it's a sign that there's no power period obed edom and the ark of God was taken to his house in 90 days. How many days? 90 solid days. It's true that I know that some miracles can take time. But something should start working after some time. Are we together? If I lay hands on you to be delivered. And after two weeks you come back one month. Nothing has happened. That means something is wrong. Not with you, with me. I should go back for a retreat. And say, Lord, these hands. Otherwise, a day will come, the hands will just look like tissue paper. As it's coming on your head, you believe that nothing is happening. Keep these hands anointed, oh God. Keep these hands anointed. Keep these hands anointed. That's a good prayer to pray for yourself. Keep these hands anointed. May I never stand upon the stage and waste the time of God's people. May I never lay hands on someone or shake someone and touch someone and his life doesn't change. This is not about showmanship. When your hands are empty, you are not in ministry. Let me tell you, you are just, you are just a, no. Abba. Believe what I'm saying. Keep these hands. Preserve it. Preserve your grace. Preserve the mystery of the oil you have put upon his hand. He said, God brought mighty miracles. Give it to us again, please. By the hands of Paul. What is happening through your hands? Nothing. 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 You don't have to be in church. What is happening through your hands? What happens to my destiny if I shake you? You claim that God lives in you. Brothers and sisters, what has happened to your hands? Nothing. Oh, let me agree with you. And we hold people. While we are praying, their eyes are opening. We are the only ones who close our eyes. Because they don't believe in us. They know that that prayer is just nonsense. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. They say, thank you, sir. And they go back and say, sorry, can I see this man of God? Because that's the real person they know who solve their problems. I want you to look at your hands and pray over it in one minute. And say, Lord, put something upon this hand. Put an anointing upon this hand that can represent your purposes. It's not a carnal prayer. I want you to sincerely pray. Shake it like a source of a cafe. Put an anointing upon my hand, so God. There are too many sick people in my environment. Look at the brother that shared his testimony. He used his hand to hold the phone. And with a single call, a dead body came back from the realm of the spirit to the physical. Place an anointing on my hand. Place an anointing on my hand. Hallelujah. He said, and the disease departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. 13. And certain of the vagabond Jews, copycats, exorcists, they took it upon themselves, upon them which had an evil spirit. You know, the name of the Lord saying, We adjure you. They thought it's just by, by big manism or wearing nice clothes. And one day, they saw someone who was heavily under the influence of demon spirits. Are we together now? We are reading to verse 20. And then 14 says, And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew and a chief of the priest, which did so. 15. And the evil spirit answered them. That's the side effect of lack of true power. It's not that the devil is trying to confess. This is not confession. This is a question. You, are, you, are, you, you stupid man of God. You think everybody is faking it. He called those who are real. Known by the realm of the spirit. Not by members. Jesus I know. Paul I know. Who are you? Hi. Who are you? When a demon spirit asks you who are you? Is that a nice thing? From the realm of the spirit. They are watching you every day. You have one suit. You went for a program. They kept water in front of your table. They did a, a good publicity. And they said, now it's time for the man of God, a man of strange anointing. And you hold the mic. And you are talking jargons and someone there is looking at you. And all of a sudden, the demon spirit with the person heavily possessed, just does his hand like that and you collapse on the stage and stand up and say, sorry, I don't know what happened. My mind is, ah, no. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army verse 16 we are reading to 20 and the man in whom the evil spirit was did what leapt on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded the consequence of approaching the power of darkness and the gates of hell when you have not proved that your fire is real there are many arrogant people in the body of Christ. Listen to me. Let me give you a very true secret. The power of God is unlimited, but its operation in the body of believers depends on many factors, which includes their level of spiritual growth. You must have the courage to discern what is your level spiritually. There are many arrogant people. They would do anything. You are seeing some level of acute darkness that does not just require being anointed, but a comprehension of deep spiritual mysteries to set the people free. You just get up by yourself, carry a bottle of oil, and travel to one state that has 200 years of track record of acute witchcraft. I'm, I'm, 
I'm in Christ. And you go there. As soon as you get there, you start pouring oil around the compound. Nobody talks to you. You just find out that that night, as you are sleeping, the next day, you get up and find yourself in the hospital. What happens? They say, that's how the spirits work. They don't talk to people. The next thing you just, whatever happens to you, is their answer. Listen, it's not everything you see that is, that is all that there is. When you see a man of God moving in the anointing, it's only what you can see with your physical eyes you think is happening. But there are interplay of spiritual laws. A man can lay hands on someone's head and lay hands on his shoulder. And you just think that it was just for the anointing to go anywhere. When that man, if he's spiritual, if he explains to you the dynamics of what he has done, are we together? It's not all about just touching his head and his shoulder or whatever. No. That's why we must grow. But as we grow, we must trust God to know certain realities that require a higher level of anointing and insight. There are certain levels of spiritual breakthrough that no matter how an individual is anointed, one man cannot bring that level of breakthrough. It will take the corporate body to bring it. We do not know. And one man will be trying to pull down something that is bigger than him. So we must have that. That's just a lesson for us to learn. Let's read down, please, quickly. Media, don't take it away. Just leave it there so that we'll hurry up, please. Help us. And this was known to all the community. Are you seeing now? Something unpleasant now is known to all the community. Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear came upon them. And the name of the Lord was magnified. They saw the apostles healing the sick. And I'm sure that they said, what is there? What is there? Miracles. Anybody can heal. The sons of Sceva went to try it. When the demons beat them, it was an endorsement that this anointing is not common everywhere. And the Bible says that the people glorified God. And then verse 18 says, And many that believed did what? As a result, they came and confessed and showed their deeds. 19, we are reading to 20. Many of them which also used curious acts. That means there were people who were smuggling magic books and using it, it was working small by small. But when certain men came into that city, they got everyone packing out, including magicians. Do you think if that book did not do something for them, wouldn't they have thrown it since? They saw something superior and powerful. And the Bible says they brought their books together and burned them before who? A community. Imagine a popular herbalist in Bromo or somewhere, maybe Zaria City, bringing his magic book here and standing before everybody and saying, I was sent to go and kill one koinonia lady. And just because I saw her cat walking, I thought it was all about the reward. When I touched fire, I got a reply and a response that I have never seen for 30 years of herbal practice. This is what happened there. And they counted the price of them and they found it 50,000 pieces of silver, 20 popular scripture, so mightily grew the word of God. Why? Because of a public display of miracles, signs and wonders. We need the supernatural. We need to cry for the anointing. We need a restoration of authentic spiritual power to back our churches and to back our lives. Man of God, don't preach without power. It's not about saying, there's somebody here, the power of God will throw you. That's not what we are talking about. That, that's not power. We are talking of results. Results. Undeniable results. Like some of you are seated here now, you are coming for the first time. You will not need to tell people you came for koinonia. You will just go back and all of a sudden you find out that something has shifted. You open your Bible. A true encounter is not known at the moment of the encounter. It's until the experience leaves and then the person just finds out that something has happened strangely. Let me give us one more. There are six but I'll just stop at number four so that we pray. 
Number one is prayer. Number two is a regular convergence of believers within that territory. Number three, an open display of miracle signs and wonders beyond the church walls. Number four, intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers. The fourth way, the ordinances of God are preserved in a territory is through an intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers. This is a serious one. Let me tell you this. Failure to mentor the younger believers that are rising will produce a generation that will forget God. Not just forget his ordinances, but forget God. I'm watching that and I'm throwing this as a challenge to the body of Christ and even the church in Zaria. Who are the apostolic and the prophetic voices mentoring our young ones in primary school now? Everybody has left them and we are focusing on ministry. Who are the people mentoring those in secondary school? Thank God for FCS. Thank God for um, um, CEM. Thank God for all of these people. But there are some of you here. You need to go back and begin to make sure that young people like Shade's child here, that by the time they are growing, they are not only receiving education alone. There must be an intentional mentorship of younger people. Most people, is the mistake of the American church, they left their children. So you will see a mother who was an old Baptist woman, served God all her life, but you will find out that her child is a tout and a hooligan somewhere who does not love God. We must concentrate. Right now, most people from the ages of 17 downwards, all they are obsessed about is phones, Android devices, PS4. I don't have a problem with it. But their entire obsession, oh, what OS are you using? You hear that? That's all they think about. Oh, I'm using this PS4. There's this. They need fire. Oh, they need. They are not too young. They need serious fire. I'm not against that. It's the reality that comes with that age range. But we must be able to guide people. That's why I love it when you see our children come here for koinonia. I know that many of you say, ah, "Are they too young to understand?" Ask occultists whether the children are too young to understand. You see a small child tie something like a napkin. And do it like this and you turn upside down and fall down. That's the child of a herbalist. And they tell you, ah, that guy is one of the most senior person in this tribe. That small boy you are saying that he's my son. He's your son in the physical. In the realm of the spirit is something else. An ancient spirit is seated on that small child. There is no child that is too small to receive spiritual things. They may be too small to articulate it. But their spirit is healthy enough to receive it. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 2. Second Timothy. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. He said the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others too. A superstar lifestyle is not God's plan. God's plan is not superstar Apostle Joshua Selman. God's plan is Apostle Joshua Selman committed by grace, certain precepts. And your assignment is to open up your heart and pour it to people so that they also will do so. May God forbid that the day will come in Zaria when the average young man does not know God. Say Amen. May God forbid that in Zaria during a church service, who we'll have young people hanging around, sagging their jeans and dancing around and toasting themselves instead of praying and crying to the God who can change any man's destiny. May God forbid that it's not your child that will refuse to know God. Listen, listen, listen. Our children must love God and they must love God genuinely. Somebody is indoctrinating a generation to hate God. I want you to beware. There is a secret indoctrination of a generation. Ages 5 to 15 must be preserved. Those of you here that God is calling you into children ministry, 
receive an anointing for it it's not all about giving children biscuit and sweet let them cram the memory verses that's how we started children now don't know any memory verse again you ask them john 3 16 they are twisting their tongues and talking nonsense teach them don't say it's not useful let them know when we were being raised they taught godly songs now in most schools children cannot have a clean song that does not have explicit contents a little child is singing a song that even as an adult you look at him and say no this should not be there must be restoration of godliness cem may god anoint you more and revive you more please fcs may god anoint you and revive you more individual children ministry groups may god anoint you and revive you more because if you yourself are not revived what will you teach the children bad things bad things that's what our children learn now things that are more than their age and we say it does not matter it matters you have children in your house who are too young to watch certain things don't let them watch it don't let them watch it there are times you need to regulate i'm not i'm not trying to be harsh but there are times you need to regulate all this this a child of seven years watching television from morning till night switching from one music channel to the other hearing things and receiving them in the spirit and authorizing demon spirits to come and destroy them we must preserve godliness say amen, amen. you don't like what i'm saying I don't plan to stop at all we must say it again and again some of you god gave you instructions before you became popular to visit secondary schools and primary schools not with the name of any ministry and bless them but now that you have become apostle joshua selman you have become madam madam whatever businesswoman or whatever you have stopped go back repent and go back we have this mentality that when we are ministering to children it's a sign that we ourselves are children it's the society that makes it so in a bit to show that we are matured we leave the children and say look let's start talking to married men jesus said let the little children come to who come to me he says and do not forbid them for for such is the kingdom of heaven please return back to children ministry in the name of jesus christ when a child looks at you and does like this to you, don't smile at the child and rub the head. Carry the hand and spank it and say, no, you don't do like this. You greet people. Are we together? Most of us watch children do all kinds of things. A visitor just comes and the child comes and stands in front of him and slaps the visitor and is laughing and you are watching. Is that good? Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but a rod of correction not discussion you don't have to be hostile on children a little spank with two fingers one two and then tell them what they did that was wrong don't just leave them cry this is what you did mommy does not like it daddy does not like it for that reason one two jesus too does not like it In include jesus let them learn and know that it's not just you alone preserve us of the ordinances of the kingdom there's this song that says our generation shall praise your name our generation shall praise your name my, my generation shall made a vow that for as long as I'm alive my generation must know God it's a covenant I've entered with myself there's no going back there's no discussion there's no hope of going back to go back is to die in life and in death it's a vow and a covenant I've made with myself and everything around my life it is to serve him forever and to introduce him to a generation God is waking us up 
Stop playing games. Don't wait until the day you have a cathedral of 5,000 people. You can start now. Some of you, you are the firstborn. You are the only one who knows God in your house. Your, your fourth born can look at you and say, stupid girl, that's a joke. You need to cast out that demon out of your head and organize a standard Bible study using a koinonia message and tell them, sit down. You are 10 years older than him, he's insulting you. You beat that devil out of that head and keep that child disciplined. The day I give birth to a child who insults me, that, that day, I'm not going to concentrate on the child. The spirit that could enter my roof through that child. A child of, maybe it's a child of two, three years, nine, ten years. No. See, am I against being, am I, am I for being harsh? No. I'm a compassionate person. But please, brothers, marry though about to marry. Never over pamper children. Let them know discipline is part of love. Because most of our children will be born in millionaire families. You must discipline them. Don't let spoiled children come up and become a nuisance to society. Pray. They say, no, I, the church is hot. Please, daddy, can you give me the car to the jeep? No, son, you are sitting down here. If me, your father, the owner of the jeep, the jeep is sitting down, you must sit down and pray. Let's go back to our primary schools. I'm serious, I'm rounding up. Let's go back to our secondary schools. Gone are the days when teachers, including Christian schools, I don't know what is Christian about the school if they don't pray. You have a Christian school and you openly said it's a Christian school and at the beginning of the class, they don't pray. What, what, is, what is the Christian about it? The teacher himself cannot pray. You never see a fasting program organized in the school. Nobody cares. While they are praying, the teacher who is a young guy somewhere who is not even born again. Wait and let Koinonia start her schools. Oh yes. Oh yes. Let Koinonia start her schools. And you will see. There's nothing like I'm busy who will supervise it. It's a mandate. Don't do that and busy man of God and allow the devil kill your ministry. Sit down, open your eyes and see what is happening. This teacher's life is questionable. He's destroying the life of the student. Call him to the office. Sir, we love you and we don't mean to embarrass you, but we notice that um, it seems you have not been uh, a very good influence over our children. Could there be a problem? Would you need some counsel? Nobody should talk to me. I'm doing all that nonsense. I tell him, as you finish this rubbish, collect your last salary with the cashier, go out of this place and never return. Any good PTA, they should clap for you as the director of that school and say you are preserving standards. They laughed at Covenant University, laughed at Landmark University, laughed at Mountaintop University, but these universities today are bringing a standard that is almost getting to Cambridge and Harvard because they kept God. Don't throw God and think it will go well with you. We'll continue next week. Six precepts to keep and preserve God in a territory. Which one have you missed? Would it be prayer, warfare, and intercession? Could it be that you neglect the convergence of believers? You come to the house of God today, you come after one month, or you come to the house of God today, you come when all your arrears are paid only to come and testify have you positioned yourself to be used by God for an open display of miracles almost every family located here has the hand of Satan roaming somewhere what is it still doing there when you come from that family apostle can you come and visit us try first Try first. Don't get used to all this. I, I love I love his testimony. Right? Pastor Lawrence, I love his testimony. It's not all about, oh, apostle prayed for me and I got a miracle. No, I came here. Apostle taught me. 
I carried that understanding back home and I said daddy I know that for 35 years no door has opened in this family but I came all the way from Zaria with an anointing I'm using the opportunity of this strike can we pray and fast for just two days and let's watch what God does and in two days something that did not happen in 30 years happens you have revealed Christ to that environment and finally we must mentor the younger believers but the younger believers themselves must open up themselves to be mentored because there are many proud proud people proud people you touch somebody he just falls down and you get up and this colleague mentality that people carry around colleague mentality some of you are in secondary school or maybe you have loved ones in secondary school thank God for what God is doing with them and all of a sudden this pompous arrogant attitude you see everybody and what is there you see vision I see vision you pray for the sick I pray for the sick it's why we never receive we keep making mistakes that are avoidable mistakes now let me tell you mentorship can destroy you if the mentor doesn't know what he's doing because some people actually submitted themselves truly to be mentored but they were mentored by people who didn't know what they were doing and they taught them rubbish they taught them pride they taught them a pompous life they taught them a theology of imbalance it matters who you listen to it matters who you open up your spirit to but that spirit must be open brothers and sisters our generation is at stake in the next 10 or 20 years many of the people we look at today will be gone is, is the truth do you believe that many of our fathers they are already wrapping up we insulted them we said ah they came and they taught people cover your head don't cover your head we insulted them they taught people die 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 we insulted them now the button is being passed to us let's hear what our children will say about us we insulted them we refused to see what God was doing to them and as young as we are we kept running our mouth insulting them they preserved the button some of them today look at great men like Papa people like Billy Graham still alive these men serve God to the end let's not insult them and not be able to reach 10 years in consistency that's the song my very powerful song that's the last song we'll sing this night when it's all been said and done there is just one thing that matters did i live my life i can't remember it again. did i live my life for you when it's all been said and done Listen. All my treasures will be nothing The Jeep and the duplex Only what I've done for love's reward Will stand the test of time Am I against prosperity? No But if that's all you can give a generation If all you can give your child is secular education and a degree you have failed Lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find precious gold in married clay turning sinners into saints and I will always sing your praise Here on earth and ever after For you've told me heaven's my true home When it's all been said and done You're my life when life is gone Listen, we're not going to be here forever No matter how you don't want to believe me Nobody there is no man on earth who is 200 years old 200 years ago none of us on earth today was on earth 
your life finished. We owe our generation and our children a debt. I will never except God takes my life but it will not be when I'm alive that I'll see darkness loom over the nations of the earth. If it means my life going for it, let it go. But the ordinances of the kingdom must be preserved in our generation. This is ministry. If you are not ready for this, don't jump around and talk nonsense. A lady sent me a text today passionately she may be following listening and she said apostle she's from my village she said apostle come to my village why have you not come i said don't worry you think i won't come there i'm coming god is counting on you listen carefully i'm rounding up god is counting on you i'm not a man of god it doesn't matter there are souls if god planned that in pastor alpha's lifetime you are supposed to save 100 million people. Do you know if you save 20 million people, the world will clap for you. But it's when you get to heaven, God will say you left 80 million people to go to hell because you did not manifest. If God has anointed you to heal 1 million people and you documented 100,000 testimonies, they will register you in the Christian Hall of Fame. But when you get to heaven, you hear nonsense. Our works will be tried by fire. Let's make business with God. This wastage of time. Let us start with our Jerusalem, Zaria. Let us start with Nigeria. You see what is happening in Nigeria? You know what most of us are doing? What is happening in this nation? Those who are for A, those who are for B. But the preservers of the ordinances of God know that there are spirits. They can read the writings on the wall. That this is not an issue of north, south, east or west. This is the devil eyeing a generation that wants to love God. And the preservers of the truth say, it doesn't matter where I come from. Lord, it is your kingdom that must be established. Can we take a few minutes to pray tonight? Rise up on your feet. There's gonna be a great awakening. There's gonna be a great revival in our land. There's gonna be a great awakening. And everyone who draws on Jesus. And let's pray over Zaria. Lord, we are preservers of the ordinances of God in Zaria. Let's start with our city. Let's start with our location. Revival. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Shakata Bakoto Lord, we pray the glory of God across Zaria City, across Savo. Across prison, across Shika, in the name of Jesus, your ordinances in this land is preserved. Preserved in our campuses, preserved in every church, preserved in every organization that calls upon the name of the Lord. We decree and we declare it. Hallelujah. There's an old revival song that was. How many of you know it? I, I pray you know it. The eyes of the Father run to and fro. You know that song? He's searching the earth. He's looking for those who make intercession on behalf of the nation. Those who will rise up and pray Who stand on the gap on behalf
times of our love We're standing the gap on behalf of our land Down on our knees We'll take a stand And pray for the sea for our land We'll pray for the needs of our land Listen to the second part, it says the power of darkness release our land will never prevail will never withstand the deep intercession by the people of passion those who will rise up and pray will stand in the gap of me of the land we stand in the gap on behalf of the land down on our knees we take a stand and pray for the seed of our land we'll pray for the needs of our land controlling powers over Zaria we curse you lift your voice and pray we curse you from region to region the powers that keep men poor the powers that stop the gospel from prevailing in this land the powers that stop development the powers that stop advancement the powers that destroy men of God the powers that destroy churches the powers that destroy families we come against you by the blood we come against you by the blood as the church of the Lord Jesus we come against you we come against you controlling powers over territories spirits of violence spirits of wickedness yokes burdens spells enchantments divination manipulations of the heavenly bodies we come against you in the name of Jesus the body of Christ grows Zaria grows whether Christians whether Muslims we advance in this city we are the light of the world in the name of Jesus everyone is blessed in this city without prejudice because of the presence of the church Hallelujah. I know our time is gone. But can we pray for Nigeria? We Listen. As God looks at the map. He's looking for incense. He has found it in other locations. Zaria must represent itself. In the realm of the spirit. Let God not see different localities. Some villagers. And God will see an uneducated woman intercessor. And check Zaria and say Zaria where is your incense? I like us to pray and say Nigeria is my business Nigeria is God's business peace to the walls peace to the borders peace in the east peace in the north everywhere we fortify the borders of this territory in the name of Jesus we declare and declare we manifest our priesthood we are lampstands we are lampstands priests unto God we raise an incense of intercession over this nation Nigeria is God's own nation Nigeria amalgamated by the hand of God himself we command from border to border the spirits of bloodshed
are limited only only the little work with God and my work in the spirit I have come to the conclusion that your limitations are never a limitation caused by mountains they are limitations based on the extent of grace the kind and the dimension of grace at work in your life is what defines everything literally everything from favor to breakthrough to healing to speed regardless of what the problem is believe me when I tell you there is a dimension of grace that can solve it so our challenge is not to discuss obstacles our challenge is to contend to dimensions where every obstacle that is prevalent to man is under the jurisdiction of the grace we carry at that point you become a blessing when you love God and you love people you will stay in the secret place till you become anointed because that's the only thing you have to give people you can give people stories after this meeting now you will forget everything I've said just like you forgot what I told you during the miracle service the only thing you remembered were the prophecies I told you and the miracles you had as powerful as the teaching was last miracle service you frankly cannot remember it entered your spirit but it's hardly in your mind but you remember the pain you came with you remember the hunger you came with now we don't live and serve God just for miracles but brothers and sisters my simple teaching tonight and this is what the Lord put in my spirit to share with us that miracles you receive listen listen this is you have to get this tonight the way you maximize miracles is not by experiencing them alone you must discern what those miracles mean because miracles are a code they are a language the voice of God is upon every miracle that he performs he is speaking something and it's important you understand what God is saying are we together now the miraculous every manifestation of the Spirit of God signs wonders healings breakthrough prosperity favor open doors whatever they are you have not maximized a miracle if all you live is with the experience of it you must discern the voice of god upon that miracle and the language that he through that miracle is speaking to you that's how we are blessed by miracles every miracle is a language just like laughter just like tears these are different languages in the realm of the spirit and tonight God is using the miraculous to say three things to us number one I will say it exactly as the Lord asked me to say it mm. number one the first language 
that miracles signs and wonders healings speak is the language of God but the first thing God is saying through miracles is I am not the author of sin sickness and pain that's the first language of God that miracles reveal the moment you experience a miracle in your life it's a language God is saying through it that I am not the author of sin I am not the author of sickness and I am not the author of pain John 10 10 says the thief cometh not in other words you never find him around except to do this to steal but for to steal and to kill and to destroy but Jesus made clear his manifesto he said but I am come that ye may have life and that you have it more abundantly so when you experience a miracle in that miracle God is speaking and what he's saying number one is that by this miracle let it be confirmed to you that I'm not the author of sin I'm not the author of sickness please listen you will never open up your heart for healing if you believe God is the cause of sicknesses you will never open up your heart for healing if you believe God is the source of pain God through a miracle is speaking a language my son my daughter you came with a door that is closed now I have opened that door it's a message to you that I am not the author of sin of sickness and of pain two scriptures quickly Mark chapter 1 please give us 38 to 45 very interesting reading Mark chapter 1 I just want to put this foundation and speak the things that the Lord has asked me to speak to us through his word and then we'll pray there are already miracles happening already miracles are happening Mark chapter 1 38 we're reading down to 45 listen it says and he said unto them let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also for there came I forth 39 and he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and cast out devils did you see that next verse please and there came a leper beseeching him and kneeling down to him just like many of you have come to find out Lord is this how my life will end or do you have another plan here's his reply to you he's saying he kneeling down to him and saying unto him if thou will thou can make me clean in other words I know you have the ability I just need to verify your willingness and this is what Jesus says 41 and Jesus moved with compassion put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him read on I will be thou clean I will be thou clean when you read from verse 45 down to 45 you will see that the man was healed so miracles are languages this is what Jesus is saying through the miracle I will I will you know that I am but it's important for you to know that I will do it you know I can make you blessed but it's another thing for you to believe I will do it the Bible says what things soever thou, des thou desire it said when thou prayest believest that thou receivest it and thou shall have it miracles are a language James 1 17 James 1 17 Shalabakotaya. I tell you the presence of God is so strong I'm just seeing a fog outside I'm not even seeing people that's all I'm seeing like a fog thick fog all the overflows that's what I'm seeing outside and I believe that that glory is doing something in people hmm. no matter where you are whether you are sitting in the gutter on the fence on a tree wherever it truly does not matter now I know that it's difficult to believe that because you're outside you think you are not seeing me directly it's not necessary James 1 17 everyone please read one to read every good gift uh-huh and every perfect gift 
is from above can mean anywhere so God clarifies coming down from who because there are spiritual wickedness in heavenly places so God says no so so you are not confused that I just said above it comes down from the father of light in whom there is no variableness neither shadow of turning he won't say this today and do this tomorrow so every miracle you will receive some of you have already received is a language you must not only experience it but you must discern the language god is saying look my son my daughter this dear family no matter how much you have cried and all of that he's telling you number one that know this because there are many of us here who are angry at god right now god you are the cause of my problems god you are the one who has not done this and that god is saying to tell you through the miracle that you will receive that he's not the author of pain he's not the author of the closed door say amen the second language that miracles speak the language of God spoken through miracles number two that I am a loving compassionate and merciful God the second language of God as revealed through miracles is that I am a loving comma compassionate and merciful God Matthew 35 verse 36 the love of God is a revelation that we must have listen 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 the little time I have walked with God I have been amazed I know that preachers have preached about the love of God I have also read about it but I am amazed at the love of God for me my revelation of the love of God only climaxes at the substitutionary work of Christ but there are things God has done here and now in my life that makes me know beyond the shadow of a doubt that God loves me and I'm not just speaking about general things oh you are breathing you are standing you are not in the mortuary all those things are general things that don't give personal revelations I have seen God arise to do things in my life that I, I, I sit back sometimes and I fight tears the love of God is a revelation that sponsors the release of power the love of God his compassion compassion is an adjective that qualifies love it, it attempts to add emotions to love when you add emotions to love it becomes compassion the expression of it revealed many times in scripture you see the Lord moved with compassion Matthew 30 35 verse 36 okay we can't have it projected Matthew 35 36 sorry let me just open it here so that we'll hurry up I think that's a mistake I said 35 forgive me let's go to first John first John 4 19 I think I skipped scripture I made a mistake there pardon me it was a revelation of the compassion of Jesus first John 4 are we there 19 please let's read let's hurry up because of time one to read everybody we love him because he did what who first loved us the bible says god had commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners right in due season christ died for us we love him because so what we are giving to him as love is only a reflection of his benevolence how that he gave it to us 
Psalms 145, I found a very interesting scripture you'd want to listen to. Psalm 145, 8 and 9. Psalms 145, 8 and 9. Are we there? Psalms. It says, The Lord is gracious and full of what? Say it after me, full of compassion. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. It says, slow to anger. The word there is patience. The New Testament calls it long suffering, slow to anger, and of great mercy. In fact, NIV says, rich in love. Rich in love. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and of great mercy. Verse 9. The Lord is good to how many? The Lord is good to. He says, and his tender mercies are over all his works. So the condition to qualify for God's mercy is that you are created by him. The moment you are God's creation, you qualify. Powerful revelation. Mm. So regardless of what the cause of the sickness, regardless of what the cause of the challenge is, are we together now? Whether it was your fault, whether it was carelessness, it was a mistake, regardless of what it is, the Bible says in God's economy, there is a system where his mercy can work. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Do you know why we need mercy? Because there are people here the challenges that you are facing right now in your life there are some of us the challenges are self-inflicted it, it, it was it was certain carelessness that gave room to demons they advise you not to sell the house you were looking for money immediately you sold the house and now you are houseless are we together that's carelessness but the mercy of god are we together you know sometimes we feel so bad and we feel can god show me mercy and rewind the hands of time and bring me out again the mercy of God was expressed in the parable of the prodigal son the Bible says the boy looked he was eating with pigs and said come the Bible said he came to himself and said how many hired servants have enough to eat in my father's house and I am here you know paraphrasing eating with pigs he said I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say father I have sinned against you and against heaven and I am not even worthy to be called your son but take me as one of your servants the Bible says while he was afar off the moment the father saw him he ran to him put the signet ring he didn't even say stupid boy you are finally back never discussed as as far as is recorded in scripture never discussed the only thing the father said is my son was once was lost but now he's found i prophesy to someone here those who are concluding against you because the challenges in your life were caused by you you know it was your fault there is still a bailout system in God's economy. It's called the mercy of God. Tonight may that mercy reach you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Miracles are a revelation by God that he can give men a second chance again. God does not just have a second chance. As many chances as your sincerity can receive. The Bible says he's slow to anger. Slow to anger. The distance between where he is and his judgment, he slowed it down to give you room to tap into his mercy. There is no mercy in the realm of the spirit. Mercy is only in this realm. That's why you cannot pray for Satan to repent. 
mercy is only a function of time and only those who walk with time can experience his mercy so he tied mercy to the morning he says your mercies are new every morning every 24 hours is renewed again ah, so that he showed you yesterday does not mean he cannot show you tomorrow god is a merciful god are you hearing what i'm saying now there are families that are probably damaged here because of carelessness there are many families that are in financial bankruptcy they didn't listen when they would have listened there are many things we are humans is saying is, is a popular saying he says to air is human is that true all kinds of self-inflicted things but tonight there is a system in god i know you have even concluded yourself but there is a system after samson's hair was taken away and they were using him to mock god in the temple they thought they plucked his eyes and the hair would never grow back again and samson lifted up his voice to the god who was full of compassion and all of a sudden his strength returned and the bible says he killed more people in his death i'm speaking to someone here they've not seen speed yet till you experience the mercy of god I know that for weeks now you've not been yourself but God is about to show you mercy and when he shows you mercy listen with mercy comes restoration naturally it's a sequence that follows don't sit down meditating on what you did wrong what you did right there is a provision for the mercy of God that's the language of a miracle so if where you were living in the world you got yourself involved with all kinds of things and then you had hiv now you are born again and you love god does god have to leave you like that to die no sir no sir no sir every time sin was cured sickness followed if god has forgiven you your sin that is spiritual he should be able to heal hiv do you know there are too many people who believe things are not working in their life because of certain things that have happened it's a different thing if you're a rebel and your heart is not broken and contrite because the mercy of god only follows and, and is applicable to those who have a broken and a contrite heart rebels never experience the mercy of god so when your heart is broken and contrite you're about to receive something that will change you hallelujah I was supposed to go for the job interview but i stayed overnight playing games and i slept i woke up by 10 the interview was over i've missed the job now the mercy of god can still speak for you i told you mercy comes with restoration if you were supposed to be employed three years ago even if they employ you now it's not restoration it's just advancement god must find a way of bringing the balance of three years so that when they check the graph of your life they don't see where the lag was that's restoration restoration is not progress restoration is an is an acceleration to catch up with where you would have been had the obstacle not come let's hurry up number three the third language that miracles speak signs and wonders now this is very important the third thing God is speaking tonight and always through miracles is I desire that you trust me enough to follow me wholly. When God brings miracles, he reveals his sovereignty, not just his love. So he tells you that I am a God of love and compassion, but I am also mighty. I calm the sea, I calm your life. I am worthy of your trust. I am worthy of your handing over your entire life to me listen i am convinced that any man who is afraid of handing over the management of his life now listen it's a very different ball game to be born again and it's another ball game entirely to hand over the management of your life to god there are many people who are born again you are praying in tongues but you have not handed over the management of your life to god come and learn of me he says take upon me he says my yoke is easy and my burden is light when it is killing you it's not of god 
Alléluia. Is God dependable enough for you to sack to hand over your whole marriage to him? Is God dependable enough for you to hand over your finances to him and his ways? Is God dependable enough for you to hand over your life with him? Do you know when you see people carry talisman, carry charm, carry arrow, and all these things they move around with to aid protection? Do you know what they are saying? Even that act of stupidity is also a language. God, I don't trust you enough to depend on you. Mm. Esther said, if I perish, I perish. So when you see the sovereignty of God, quarter to shame, he steps in for you. It's a language. He's saying, I am that mighty. And as a result, hand over everything. You know, my concept of born again is not that you recited um, the Lord's prayer, salvation prayer. Reciting salvation prayer for me is not born again enough. You are born again when I look at your life experientially and I see the influence of the government of the kingdom in every aspect of your life. You give God academics and leave finances, you are not born again. You are a rebel in that area. Do you know Satan only attacks the area that is not covered by the kingdom of God? He cannot attack an area that is covered by the kingdom of God because you are numb to it. Your job is to apply the principles of the kingdom and leave God with the responsibility of manifesting his word. Our fears, our insecurities make us to come out of alignment. So when Jesus came, his message was repent, go back. You've trusted God concerning every other thing. When you thought the carryover will come, you saw it change. Now for job, you are trying to maneuver your ways. There is somebody somewhere and you keep disturbing him. Hundred missed calls, his foolishness is a sign that you do not depend on God. Tonight I'm encouraging you by the miracles that God will do in this place he's speaking to you and saying can you not see that my life your life is safer with me than it is with you are we together protection people are afraid of dying listen the world is so vulnerable you don't have to be outside to die people have sat down inside about to take the first spoon of food and they collapsed and died mysteriously there are arrows that fly by day. You can only rebuke the ones you know. What of the ones you don't know? The safest place to be is under. The Bible says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High, it says, shall abide under the shadow of His wings. Like a hand covers the children. A hand, may, you can slaughter chicken but not when children are under it you can catch it when he's roaming around but when a real responsible head has the children under it you come near there you lose your eyes for it have you seen a chicken that violent yeah so god is a merciful god to you but wait and see what he is to those who want to trouble you that's why the psalmist said how he said many are they that trouble me many are they that says where is your help he said but thou O lord you are a what shield first God will shield you so that you calm down and then now turn and deal with anybody who is cursing him in your life. That's what will happen to somebody. I'm not motivating you. Believe me. If you believe in God and you believe in miracles, most people who believe in miracles have not settled down to discern what they mean. So all of a sudden, if in a few minutes now, the pain suddenly disappears. You don't just go back saying, wow, this, this koinonia is powerful. No, you have experienced the miracle, but you are not blessed by it because you have not discerned the language that comes from it. If God suddenly, by tomorrow, someone calls you and gives you a land, opens up a door for you, untold wealth within one week, if you just get excited and say, finally, I am rich, you have experienced the miracle, but you have not discerned it. You must know that God is speaking there and saying, it is my might. That one is not love you are seeing. That one is my might. I can compress time and bring your desire of one year to one week. Can you depend on me? That's why you see, most people, Pastor Jake,
don't discern miracles that's why they keep receiving miracles and their spiritual life keeps going down because they are receiving miracles and not discerning from it i have learned from every dealing in, of god in my life a dimension of him like mike said it so powerfully there are names god wants you to know not the ones you've read in the bible he uses miracles to write his names upon your life so that by the time you are 30 years you are 40 years you have known certain names of god enough for you to build a foundation so that no nonsense will just come around and shake you if you have been born again for a while and you shake and fidget over everything there are some names of god you don't know are we together listen if by the grace of god let me just give you an analogy for many years we have been transporting people the bus services so you know by experience and by revelation that we are kind-hearted and we love you is that true now if on your way coming for koinonia sir somebody quickly rumors to you and says after service this night the way i've been feeling or apostle told me or i had a vision or i had a dream that we are not going to use bus this night the experience you have had with me will make you to trivialize that nonsense so when satan speaks and you pay attention it's because there is something about god you don't know so he will look at you and say hey, you better just be laying hands on your stomach because barrenness for sure is your own you are seeing it with everybody and at first you say no it's not my portion and then every day your whole prayer time you are laying hands on your hands oh god no i can't be barren i can't be barren it's no longer prayer you are only spiritualizing unbelief that one is not prayer again do you know there are many things we call prayer that is not prayer that you are using prayer language does not mean it's prayer it's simply a spiritual way of communicating unbelief that's why it doesn't get answered to you you are consoling yourself but when it rises up is you are not asking god for anything you think you are asking oh god are you not the one who said this in the realm of the spirit what you are saying is god mercy i'm afraid so the only thing you get back is is mercy not answer because you thought you were requesting but god is listening to the voice of your spirit you are you are ramp you are wrapping scriptures just to vent fear and god is saying if you trusted me you would have been quiet by now imagine that you are still praying for this chair to hold you by now pastor alpha and mike you are just moving and then later i tap us out and say are you stop praying let's pray Shabaladaba. lord in the name of jesus gravity is still working i i know this is that is that are you are you a, an intelligent physics student no that there is a level to which we understand but there is a level to which it's unbelief and somebody will now ask you and say what you need is not prayer what you need is revelation and an encounter an experience that makes this real so someone will say jump up and match it when you match it and it does not fall do you know sometimes god does not call, cause trouble but he gives you strength by exposing you to your fears and then you find out that they didn't do you anything you thought you will die but you are still standing and so you laugh at what made you cry yesterday that's how we grow in the spirit doctor's report said two weeks you are still five years and you've not taken panadol they said this hepatitis is is just at best though if you reach 21 glory to god you are now 45. you were not thinking about it you have you reached 45 because you forgot about it now that you have started remembering you are wondering whether you reach 48 you will reach even 100. no see i have constructed my belief system such that believe me when i tell you there are some things that cannot enter my mind again if I pray with you, you'll be very frustrated. Because while you are rapping and ranting requests and say, Oh God, Baba, this and that and that. There are certain things you know about God that gives you rest. That's why I say, come on to me. You have been moving. You are going on to anybody. You are moving. He said, come on to me. All ye that are weary. What wearied you? Running around like a roaring lion. That's the spirit of Satan that makes people... God, he, listen, listen. It's Satan that moves around like a roaring lion. God only moves his eyes, not his body. The Bible said the eyes of the Lord run it to and fro. Satan has to physically run up and down. And you are now joining him. So he said, come on to me. This running around has worried you. I will give you rest. Have you seen somebody rest? When you say rest in peace, 
is a person moving around have you seen somebody dancing and you're about to bury him you are wicked you bury people who are quiet be still stillness stability in the spirit is a great sign of faith turn and prophesy to someone and say be still say you're running around will not bring you the, the problem the answer say it say be still your phone calls go, say it your phone calls text messages and running around will not bring you the answer be still your lack of sleep continue will not bring you the answer discussing your problems with everybody will not bring you the answer beating your wife whether you are married or not say it say beating your husband too will not solve the problem harassing your children will not solve the problem committing suicide will take you to hell look do you know people who claim they don't have energy i'm surprised that they are wasting the remaining one doing useless things instead of them to go to the presence of god and die there and say lord this thing whether or not it is answered i'm already in trouble there's no other trouble to enter so let me stay in your presence and die there there is a way you put pressure on the integrity of god when he knows he's the last card truly in your life you'll be surprised to see what you will do many of us have options you must follow him he said if you will not believe me believe me for the work's sake believe that i am in my father and we are one there is a oneness in us i handed responsibility to my father and i submitted to his authority it gave me rest brothers and sisters any miracle that does not draw you closer to jesus listen even if that miracle was produced by the power of god if it does not draw you closer to jesus you have not really received the real miracle you have received the experience but you have not discerned it to make you grow i am surprised that the more people receive miracles they now run away from god when zacchaeus had a miracle he dropped down from the tree gave up his his um, tax collecting work and immediately walked with jesus when peter saw the miracle of the fish he said go away from me i'm a sinner and jesus said no come 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 and sit down let's eat together miracles draw people you are a drunkard you don't spend one hour without taking a bottle of of gulda you have been sitting here for hours now the urge is not there that's a miracle the miracle is not so that immediately after koinonia you quickly go back and take one more before you sleep you have frustrated the grace of god you know let me tell you something by god's grace i believe in miracles but i also believe the message that miracles give we don't discern the languages we only gyrate in the experiences that's why satan corrupts when a native doctor gives you a miracle he, he attaches a message to it he says by this miracle know that this small thing this horn you are seeing is powerful and when you receive that miracle you will go back to the man again there is nobody who runs away from result when you receive results in an area you stay there if the result is consistent you camp there so that you visit god's presence receive a miracle and run away and only go back now that you have acknowledged that he's the only one who can produce the miracle stay there tell your neighbor stay with god please prophesy say stay with god there are people here as they are saying stay with god the holy ghost is speaking to you because i don't care whether you are born again or not the kingdom is not a priority to you you probably just came here because the sickness or the challenge or the bills or whatever is eating you up yes god will touch you but if all you get tonight is prophecy so that you can build a house you have not discerned it. miracles genuine miracles produced by the spirit should draw men to god so when you see the favor it brings tears in your eyes 
and you say lord i will walk with you forever i've tried every other thing but i've settled with you say amen the last message that miracles produce there are many more but let me just stop here oh scripture for the third point john 10 30 to 38 just write it and you go and read it later our time is gone john 10 30 to 38 the next point what god is saying tonight and what he will say always with genuine miracles listen this is what he's saying my servant is my representative he represents my voice to you hear him the last message that miracles produce is that god is speaking to you that if i can come to you and prophesy to you if you can get healed if you can get blessed god is saying something he's saying the man you are seeing the ministry you are part of are a representation of my program on earth here and now so have the confidence to not just listen to me listen to them miracles are a language that demonstrate that the man speaking to you the one with whom god will use to produce the miracles i know people say in meetings we have not come to see any man we came to see jesus that's true but listen to what father abraham told lazarus he said they have he said let somebody come you know return from the grave and he said no they have the law and the prophets they should listen to them in other words there are people that represent what the out of body experience would have given them listen to them a man who can tap from an unseen realm and bring an anointing to touch your life it will be stupid for you to believe that he's not at, in touch with god so if he tells you jesus christ wants a relationship with you and you don't listen to that one you have not discerned the miracle are we together now if i come and stand on stage here and i'm just standing and you are falling and shouting and receiving an impartation that is a message it's not just it's not about really about a man but it's the fact that god is speaking and he has found a vessel he's speaking with so you listen to the man speak as though you are listening to god forget about the imperfections that will come you are not alone the holy ghost is there to see through it what if i listen to everything and i fail no how did they write the bible How did they write the bible all kinds of people wrote the bible temperous people bad people but in the midst of it the purposes of god was still preserved holy men wrote regardless of their imperfections let me tell you there is a degree to which no matter how much flesh you have god will veto it to make sure certain things will pass to his people with the level of purity that they need whether it is intellectual limitation hear me whether it is spiritual limitation that is why a donkey can talk do you know what it takes for a donkey to learn english when men of god pray for utterance utterance is not oratory utterance is the ability of the holy spirit to superimpose your flesh and grant that your communication be full of light that it be accurate and with minimal if any corruption as it gets into the heart of the receptors that's utterance utterance is not the ability to speak english that's oratory utterance is a spiritual thing the capacity to communicate realities such that regardless the spiritual level of the listeners they will receive that one you have to pray for it you go to school to get oratory but you stay with the spirit to get utterance hallelujah Hebrews chapter 2 when you read from verse 4 the Bible talks about the man Jesus he said he was approved Hebrews 2 verse 4 can you give it to us quickly God also bearing witness he talked about the man Jesus and how that he appeared unto certain people and those people now haven't commissioned them to go and represent him the Bible says God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the holy ghost according to his own will so god confirmed their word 
you may doubt their English but you may not doubt the result the same way some of you will not doubt what you are about to experience you know I watch people receive miracles and sometimes I know even them they don't agree have you seen somebody falling under the anointing and he's shocked as he's going down what's happening to me boy he's still going down anyway that's the same way your life will change you will sit down and not know what is happening to you you will just walk out of this place and my God like the chains of Peter fell you will see chains just fall and leave you it says God bearing them witness so what are miracles instruments of witness God validates the fact that this person is my servant listen to him he has been approved like you have navdak registration number on water now there are those who produce water at the back of their house and don't have navdak registration number when they catch them you find them whether they are sincere or not they were not approved We're about to pray isaiah 44 verse 25 and 26 two scriptures and then we we'll begin to pray that staring is happening again isaiah 44 25 to 26 listen talking about god now the god that frustrated the tokens of the liars and make it divine as mad the bible says he turned wise men backward and makes their knowledge foolish listen to what he does 26 that's what he does to them but this is what he does to his servant that confirmeth the word of his servant and performeth the counsel of his messengers what is the confirmation of the word you are blessed if it happens it's a confirmation what is performing the counsel be healed and immediately you are healed that's a performance that's creation like a woman is in her, her father is in Adamawa and she's here in Zaria and a word comes and all of a sudden she goes back and the man who had an accident now is walking he performed the counsel so if there is no proof in your life among the many variables you have to check is whether you are approved they no 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 you can be a servant of God but not yet be approved being called does not ever mean being approved approved mean you are being released to begin to dispense the realities of the kingdom many people think the opposite of being approved is being fake no the opposite of being approved is being real but unapproved there are many unapproved genuine servants of God unapproved genuine servants of God in ministry for many years ask Isaiah he was prophesying but he was not approved 6 verse 1 in the year that King Uzziah died Isaiah saw the Lord a call was taken and given to him is that true he said here am I send me God didn't say I'm already sending you that was when his ministry started you can be doing a lot of things the opposite of being approved get this the opposite of being approved is not being fake fake is in another category you can be real yet not accredited like you are a student but you don't have a certificate yet you are in school you are intelligent you may even be on IT you may even be doing projects but it doesn't make you a graduate there is a certificate do you have it many people just stand and say the bible says this sign shall follow i am a believer be healed we keep mocking ourselves with nonsense because when you read the bible intellectually you will get not head sophia human wisdom you must read it of the spirit tarry in jerusalem he had told them many times do you know before he said tarry ye he had sent them one time he said go two by two what happened to the power that is now saying tarry until he be endued what happened to the power that they came back blind i saw he gave them his name they were not yet approved they only went in his name that's why i said don't rejoice that miracles you didn't do anything there if i tell you the dynamics of the result you didn't participate the most important thing is that you must be a part of this family your names being written in heaven approved when you are approved it's like a register in the realm of the spirit so when god is paying approved servants you receive your share you are not receiving salary find out whether you are employed 
that's why the Bible says those he called he glory he, um, those he predestined he called but he has not glorified them yet those he called after a season of building he now glorified them if a man will punch himself that man will be a vessel unto honor he can stop there as a vessel unto honor comma meat for the master's use believe me many approved singers not mistrials in the spirit they sing and twist their tongue and they think the secret is in minor songs and you sing all kinds of minor songs you think the secret is in clashing cymbal because Joshua Selman is doing it you harass every drummer to clash every cymbal no show me the certificate let no one trouble me Paul says for I bear there is a batch demon said Jesus I know we see his certificate a man approved of God approved of God approved of God Paul the apostle was approved of God let me tell you every true servant of God who has worked with God and has a dealing with God is approved and when he's approved immediately whether you are called into the ministry of helps there must be a sign from heaven when Jesus was born he was approved of God there was a sign a star arose on the day of Pentecost that experience was approved of God there was a sign every time there is approval there is there is a sign where is your own it could mean you are not even in the school completely or you can be in the kingdom and not be in the school of the spirit there are two different things like there are people in abu some are selling rice some are, are some have some some are selling um things you are inside abu but you are not in any faculty so you can be in the kingdom but not in the school of the spirit only those in the school of the spirit access power and command the grace that will keep nations still i'd like you to pray one minute and say lord i'm in your school oh nothing is taking me out of there i'm not only in the kingdom i'm in the school of the spirit the place where men are made with power the place where men access the presence of god superior dimensions of spiritual reality pray in one minute Thank you father for being in the kingdom I gave my heart to you and I'm there but Lord I walk with you consciously in obedience he that endures to the end he shall be given a crown and a white stone there are rewards not everything in the kingdom is a gift brothers and sisters there are rewards that's why there are diversities of results if there are no rewards everything will be possible for everybody at the same time because the lord is rich unto all why are there disparity in results is disparities of trainings just like you have a professor you have a master's holder you have an undergraduate you have a secondary school certificate holder different seasons that provide different accesses to graces lift your voice and pray hallelujah second corinthians will rise up to begin to pray now god will do a quick walk second corinthians 12 verse 12 by this little teaching i I'd like you to desire more in god more in god greater grace a time will come your talk will weary people they will be tired of you when you speak and there are results your words become heavy they look like the word of God second Corinthians 12 12 Paul was speaking about his credentials you used to know me as a scribe but I had an encounter I was in the wilderness of Arabia for over 19 years he was in the kingdom but he was in the wilderness of Arabia after 19 solid years of stringent building with the Lord a testament came truly the signs of an apostle there are signs called the signs of an apostle the sign is not the name I am apostle Jeffrey 
I am Apostle Joshua Selman. No, I am Pastor this. I am Reverend this. The word apostle there does not does mean apostle like an office. The sign of an approved and a sent one. When Navdak appro approves something, no matter what the drink is, there is something they stamp there. No matter what it is, check somewhere. Even if there's no space, they create space and stamp it. It is based on this, brothers and sisters, that we can gather people like this by grace and say, come. This is not the issue of my personal faith. This is the issue of a Navdak number. Koinonia is registered. This is like you have jam center. There is jam center that is for crooks. When people go there, they don't even write exams. Is that true? You pay money, but there's what they call, uh, what they call it? Approved centers. When you go there, you sit down, there are tables. They have gone through a, tra a training. By the grace of God, by the election of grace and by our determination to take advantage of it. Truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you all. In what was the first thing? The first sign is not miracles. The patience to endure till you access it. The first sign of an apostle, a saint one, is not signs and wonders. Many foolish people deceive themselves. The first sign is patience. For many years you will walk with God and not see one result. The first sign is patience. You will prophesy, nothing will happen. You will pray for the sick, nothing will happen. But you are still in the school. So patience. Then in signs, notice the progression, signs, trickles. Then it now moves to the next realm, wonders. Then the apex of your apostolic ministry is called mighty works. That one is not personal miracle, that is territories. Elijah stands and said, there shall be no rain. Look at the progressions. These four levels, if you don't enter this level in ministry, you will never be fulfilled. There are people this where they are patience 10 years they will not move others signs here and there somebody is testifying you you are let me tell you how you know it's a sign you are not even sure whether it came from you they just say pastor prayed for me and sincerely you cannot tell when there is no predictability a sign shows direction that's not it if you see a sign to abu that sign is not abu it's pointing you there wonders a realm of predictable results you begin to see certain things and then before you reach the apex he called it mighty works the only other person that title was used for was jesus he said what wisdom is this that such mighty works were wrought this is where we are going where you shift systems so don't just say i'm born again I will enter here you are joking it's the same way saying i have admission i'm a first class student they gave you admission you walk your way to first class the options are there he gave on to one five two one according to their several ability not his desire for them several things will be happening tonight brothers and sisters I want you to trust three things tonight as we pray. One, listen, 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 listen. Number one, believe in your faith in God and God's faith in you. Two, listen, believe in the covenant that we have with God. I told you that our work with God is based on relationship, but kingdom advancement is based on covenant. There are covenants that men have with God. Let me tell you, listen. I can take one bottle of beer here and come up and minister. I will minister by the covenant. My relationship with God is something he will deal with me with later on. But as far as the covenant of using my life, my grace and koinonia to minister, not even me can stop it. That's why when Elijah died, the covenant was still on. His bones, Elisha, his bones still raised the dead because the grace on him was authorized to do that not whether he was living or dead that's the basis of man to transfer that's the correct basis of man to transfer that when you touch a man or shake a man you are going not with a material you are carrying a covenant to your home god stops dealing with you now based on you it is on that basis we can say the god of this 
when you say the God of Isaac there's something about God and Isaac that makes him hear you the God of Jacob there's another thing I don't encourage people to say the God of Joshua Selman and this but brothers and sisters there are covenants there are men God enter the covenant with them like Joshua no man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life he didn't say where you do well that's the covenant this house you see is a mystery of covenants covenants here and there that's the reason why we make certain bold claims I truly believe that if all I use is just my personal faith I will be afraid I have eyes I'm a human being you can see cases that you know are impossible but there are higher dimensions rise up on your feet let's pray I've convinced you enough to believe that you can walk out of here free please lift your voice and in one minute blast in tongues pray in the spirit Lord I believe that by these two immutable things it is impossible for God to lie Are you praying? For surely the signs of an apostle were what were wrought in patience and signs and wonders and mighty works. Listen, in one minute, please, young old, just walk with this instruction mention clearly the issue of concern and say father visit it don't just say god bless me that's not a very wise statement be very exact he said give us this day lift your voice and pray in one minute please pray passionately We want to see you pray. We want to hear from you, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. We want to see you. We want to hear from you. about to be broken burdens are about to be lifted families are about to rise pray Emmanuel Emmanuel we want to see you hello Madonna such grace in this place such grace listen listen there are spirits you've heard me say it that tie down men there are spirits that tie down destinies there are spirits that tie down families and are responsible for the predicament of people when you come into the presence of God like this, some of you are lovely, innocent people. You love God with all your heart. But certain things are not going well with your life. Those spirits must give way. There is an anointing. Don't be afraid. 
don't ask whether it will happen it's not just your personal faith you have believed God that's all right leave the rest to him whenever I call you you will answer me my altar is calling you oh God my altar is calling you oh God my secret place is calling you oh God my sacrifice is calling you I pray, oh God, take my praise, will you take my praise, take my praise, it's calling you, all right, we're ready, let's go, lift your hands, I want to pray for you, that every spirit, and every force my god i see so many people so many people who will be delivered so many people who will be delivered i want you to bring them out the anointing is here it has come lift your voice at the count of three i want you to shout that name jesus inside and outside i come against every spell every enchantment by the power that is in the name of Jesus that as God's people shout in the name that is above all names let every dagon crumble are you ready now at the count of three one two three shake it take it take it my God charms 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 I'm seeing charms I'm hearing in my spirit charms bring them out charms charms divination instruments of wickedness divination I curse you Katokata. outside the angel of his presence outside sweeping like rain that view divination instruments of wickedness I command you to leave I command you to leave this is a place of his power lift your hands my god my god my god listen i'm seeing something in the realm of the spirit this thing that they count there's this thing that they count one by one in the name of jesus that's what i'm seeing and the lord is telling me that there are instruments of divination people are about to be set free now lord i don't know where they are but like fire is visiting at least 21 people inside and outside in the name of jesus let it go i release that fire now help them right now right now by the anointing of the holy ghost no devil will stand it i assure you no devil will stand it whether you are inside or outside there is grace to set you free i command divination i command yokes broken lift your hands and pray I'm seeing a number in the spirit 74 and the Lord is telling me that's the number of people that must be delivered from the spirit of delay lift your voice this delay is a wicked spirit I want to pray you may not know you belong to that category is the anointing that will fish you out guys be sensitive please please in the name of jesus 74 people lord wherever they are i stretch my hands right now the spirit of delay at the count of three i'd like you to shout jesus one two three let them go now let them go now the cause of delay the spell of delay so 
outside only those outside lift your hands the Lord is directing me those outside at the count of three I want you to shout Jesus first overflow second overflow and online there are certain people that will be picked by angels strong delay spirit outside in the name of Jesus are you ready just those outside one two three Command that spirit. There's fire outside. He must go now. He must go now. Leave that sister. Leave our destiny. Hallelujah. Faith. Faith. F A I T H. Faith. Who is faith? I'm hearing a name, Faith. Are you Faith? Hold on, hold on. Don't match the people here, please. Faith. This person is outside. It's a small girl. She's wearing a white something. White like white. Is there someone like that? Come. What's your name? This is the girl I saw in the spirit. I'll pray for you. Come. What's your name? Faith. Your name is Faith. Come. Where are you from? Let's hurry up. Please, if I mention your case, I don't have to mention every case. Don't worry. Our time is constrained. We wanted to make it a vigil, but we are off to Lagos tomorrow. Just Faith. Let them come. Are you an usher? Usher, lift your hands. You are the first person to receive the miracle that I'm praying for. I'm looking at you and I'm not seeing an usher. God is saying he's visiting your family right now. Receive that grace now. Right now. Let that devil leave our family. Go. Delay. Out of our family. After that you can do your ushery work. Look at me my dear. Where are your parents? Huh? Where is home? Where do you stay? You are faith too? Huh? Let me pray for you. Hold my hands. It's not just you I'm praying for. Look at me. I want to pray for your family. Your family is being greatly oppressed. Huh? Go and tell your parents that a man of God prayed for them. I'm seeing a family that came from Abuja. That's what the Lord is showing me. Abuja. Not just a person. Like a family that came from Abuja. Father, in the name of Jesus, let there be a miracle. Supernatural miracle. Miracle. All of you, your names are faith. Hold on. Please hold your hands together um, so that we can save time. We still have sick people to pray for. We are going to be very fast. It won't take long. I want us to finish very fast tonight. All the faith. I'm going to pray. Your name is faith too? Osha. You are an Osha. You are a worker. You will receive your own differently. Lift your hands. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's giving you beauty. 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 In the name of Jesus. Beauty. All the faith. I'll just lay hands on one person as a point of contact to you. Father, I don't know why they are out, but may the anointing flow from this one lady right now. To every one of them. Right now. Right to all of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. So that we will save time. By the power of the Holy Spirit. I see a family from Abuja. Where are you? Please let me speak to you. From Abuja, clap for Jesus as they come quickly, please. Hold on. Who is sick? Who is sick? Who is sick? My chest. Your chest has a problem. Yes. You sleep in the night yes. and you feel as if there's something on it. Yes. This is witchcraft. Yes. But someone else is sick. I'm saying, where are you from? Abuja? All of you? Yeah. Hold on. Yes. All of you? Yes. I didn't say if you are from Abuja, please. You are a family from Abuja. Hold on, hold on. If they are here, don't push them. Let's be gentle on them. Why is he there? Okay. No, you don't have to. Those under the anointing, listen, listen. When people are under the anointing, especially for deliverance, there's a reason why they are out. Don't just lift them and push them. You can shift them. There's a reason why we ask them to come out. It's not to show they are falling. You already saw them fall there.
you are the one from Abuja lay your yes. hands come let me lay my hands on you you are scattered you are all the same family all of you the ones at the back are you the same family you are on your own you would have sat down there my brother my sister two of you you are together I will pray for you what do you want God to do for you please we don't have time if you are not sure I'll just keep you aside so that we can deal with it. I need employment employment yes, sir. Job. Do you love yeah, God? Yes, sir. Yeah? Yes, sir. Seriously? Yes, sir. What of you? I want to follow my education, sir. See, it's not everybody. I'm just speaking on behalf of your family. We don't have all the time. I have to pray for you, my brother. Huh? God will heal you. And then for you. What's wrong? He has diabetes. That, I said there's somebody sick. Yes. You heard me say there's somebody sick. Having chest pain, but this one leave chest pain. Chest pain is not this. This one is witchcraft, it's not sickness. This okay, we have to pray. Huh? I'm looking at this and I'm seeing these things that doctors used to check organs of people. I'm seeing that he has a wound, he has a wound inside, and the wound is not healing. We have to pray, Father, heal that in Jesus' name. Lift your hands. I'll just lay my hands on you very quickly. My major focus is to pray for the sick. That breakthrough, we can prophesy that one, but I, I want to pray for the sick. Right now, in the name of Jesus, be healed, my brother. Your chest, completely. You go and get a job. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. It's done. Go back to your seat. Please come quickly. Let me pray for you. It's done. I pray for you. Why are you here? Huh? God should what? Set me loose. From Set you loose. Yes. Distraction. You are distracted. One, two, you are very disorganized. Look at me. Your major problem is not demonic. You are very scattered and disorganized. You need your life to get some level of order. Lift your hands. And you, you want to do ministry. You, you don't need, you, you heard me say approved, right? You settle down. You don't just run around. If you are disorganized, you will not get results. Father, grant him grace. Supernatural grace. Something is leaving you and something else is coming into you. That thing that must leave you go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I release an anointing upon you. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please. Why are they here, your children? Come. What's, are they sick? What's wrong with them? This one has a heart problem. Heart problem? Yes. Oh my God breathing problem they are all your children they are all your children hold them is you i should pray for not them the, the children are just reacting to something i have to pray for you eh? things are not going on well where's your husband he's abroad he's abroad how long has he been there getting to here what i want to tell you eh, is not something i will say in the open are you hearing me? But uh, I pray for the grace of God. That's that's all I will say for now. Yeah? And I'll pray for you because you see, any success. No, let hold my hands. Let's pray. Why are you holding our hands? You are sister. I'll pray for you. Huh? You want to marry and what again? Are you married? Uh -huh. Marriage is one. What's the second prayer point? Job. What's the third one? Financial victory. These are the three things I brought you here. There's one more. There are four. Ministry. Ministry. So there are four. I'm seeing it like that. That's why I'm telling you. Did you show me? Did you tell me? That's what I'm telling you. Marriage is number one. Then job, finance, and then you have the call of God. You're a woman of prayer and God shows you dreams. Is that true? Where's the mic? Yes, sir. God shows you dreams. Yes, and you are wondering, you don't know whether you should wait for your husband or start ministry now because that's your fear you see the anointing is on her that's your fear you don't know whether you should start something now or you should wait for the man god will send into your life and it's because you're a nice lady you don't want to do anything that looks antagonistic to his ministry this is i'm hearing you discuss with a friend huh and that's so god is going to solve that problem for you but you let's pray hold my hands father what god has joined together the Bible says, let no man, whether, whoever, 
man also includes woman man doesn't just mean a male figure man includes man plus every jezebel that represents a system and i'm using i'm not saying your husband are you getting me now this is not something i'll say here i want to prophesy any marriage any couple that are married now and there's anybody looming around to reap where you did not sow in the name of jesus we scatter that nonsense right now you will hear testimonies from this thing i just this little prayer has delivered somebody right now father let there be miracles the spirit of infirmity i command it to live your life now in the name of jesus bring the children please where's the one with the heart problem uh okay look at this adorable baby heart problem heart what did they tell you he said there is a swelling a swelling in his heart hold it for me it must go down because this baby now will not grow well how many of you know that the baby will not grow well you may not know what is wrong until he grows then certain things that should happen to other people will not happen to him i know a lady that i prayed for she doesn't have a womb i'm not saying it's not developed completely no womb like that usually it's these kinds of things um you know at the point of conception several things happen jesus in the name that is above all names i pray in the presence of your people this is why you sent me by the power of the holy spirit let this heart become normal now you see you see what is happening i told you is the mother that should be prayed for i'm praying for him and see the person falling under the anointing because that's where it came from it returns to hell now i can't hold this one it's big in the name of jesus supernatural miracle see the anointing is on her too somebody come and hold her please hold her hold her god is healing the baby and healing her too. two of them hold her the anointing is on her god has removed something from your family related to this there's something you would have suffered that is related to this thing you are an usher while you held him that's why the anointing touched him in the name of the lord jesus christ i want to prophesy on two people they will come under the anointing now please bring them out just two people right here indoors there's an anointing that is coming on two people right now thank you jesus the, the lord is just giving a word we're going to pray for the sick now two people you can't stand it it's like fire to come on you please bring them august is it augusta augusta august augusta or august something that looks august something a name augusta or augustina or something like that Please, anybody with that name, Augustine. Sir, this man, come. This, this fair man, come. Your breakthrough has come. There's a lady outside, that August something. You are outside in the overflow. There is another one, you are wearing chain. Chain. Like uh, this thing they wear. Is there someone like that? Not you, sir. You? There's somebody you're wearing. I want to pray. Uh, ah. look at you lift your hands look at me shout I avoid trouble shout it I avoid trouble you are speaking English shout it I avoid troubles because I'm seeing the devil planning to really frustrate you December and we have to pray against it and this is something that is, is something you are vulnerable to but in the name of Jesus, no trouble. By the power of the Holy Spirit, no trouble. In the name of Jesus, you don't stop them, you just guide them. In the name of Jesus. Sir, I want to pray for you. God is about to change your life. You are a man, look at me, sir. Two things will happen to you. I say it in the open. You will come and stand here. Look at me. One, look at me, sir. A level of financial breakthrough you have never seen in your Amen. life. Amen. Amen. what is going to come Amen. upon you. Amen. I want you to believe it sir it's not just because maybe uh, i'm talking to you because all of that that's number one number two is that i want to pray for you i'm seeing a thermometer rising up and down your chest this is bp yes, sir. huh yes sir. you have bp 
Yes, sir. Did you tell me? No, sir. I have to pray on it. If I don't pray on it, you are going to have serious problem. Because I'm seeing you go to a doctor. Maybe now or in the future, and the doctor is specifically telling you not to eat salt. All right, salt, like completely. I don't know what, that, but I think something that has not to do salt. So I have to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. And any other thing you came here with, hold my hand, sir, with both of your hands. I want you to believe. Father, there is a grace for prosperity. Receive that grace. In the name of Jesus, is, there is an anointing that makes men prosper. Look at me, sir. In the name of Jesus, I release that grace. God gave it to me. I pray for you again. In the name of Jesus, that mantle and unction that can cause a man to prosper, may it come upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you, sir. And BP, come, sir. Let the BP be healed now. In the name of Jesus. Huh? What's your name? What's his name? Augustine. Augustine. Augusta. Augusta. Yes, Thank you. Come. You are the one who needs deliverance. I'm going to pray for you. But lift your hands. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing. Uh, now, this is not death. But I'm seeing. You know how a place has been deserted, like a wilderness. That's what I'm seeing as I'm looking at you. And I have to pray for you because if I don't pray for you, are you married? Huh? No, if I don't pray for you, number one, you will not get any reasonable man to marry you. It's all these foolish men who will loiter around and come and not be serious. Huh? In the name of Jesus, for you and your family, be set free right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I open up those doors. Jane! 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 You are a fair woman, looks like an evil lady. You are wearing it like a sleeveless. Jane! Sleeveless, something like that. Who is that? Huh? I'm the one. Look at she's surprised. You think I'm a herbalist? I've been talking to people. Why are you looking like um one? The first miracle is there's something in your stomach. Yes, sir. Is that true? Yes. Did you tell me yes, sir. something is biting you physically like a snake? It moves down to your breast region and comes down there yes, every day. Yes, sir. That's the first thing God is going to do. Stand up. Number two. See, she doesn't want to stand up. Stand up, madam. Mm. Ah. Kai, you are a good woman, but you have suffered. I have to pray for you. Somebody came into your life and did something I cannot say in the open. You have been crying till now. You gave this man everything. Is that true? Yeah, right. Everything you gave this man, he rubbish your life into zero and went away. When I was preaching about mercy, God was talking to you. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes. Don't worry. The man even said you're a fool. God will use the foolish things and confound the wild. <laughs> Stand up. Three. That man that appears in your dream is going to leave you now. Stand up. Amen. This this wicked spirit. Stand up, my dear. Hold my hands. Let her go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ah, I love the power of God. That person lifting that picture, lift it high. Right now, the power of God will touch you. Lift both of your hands. There's anointing coming on you right now. That's it. Your prayer is answered. It's done completely. The miracle for which you are lifting that picture for completely is gone may your life turn and change like day and night Amen. in the name of Jesus I close every door you have opened in your life and I command by the power of the Holy Spirit let there be a miracle for you in the name of Jesus Christ one two three four four months there is someone you're a businessman you've not done anything for four months it's like you are, I don't know if it's a project you are doing or you are supposed to do something. Four months, you have been completely grounded. I don't know if you are inside or outside. Please run. God wants to pray for you. Why are they here? Jane, I want to pray for you and then we'll pray for the sick. Jane.
Madam, I finished with you. You can go back rejoicing. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be breakthrough for you. Let there be breakthrough for you. If I pray for you, please go back. If I don't speak for you, uh, upon you, it just means I'm not hearing anything else. Jane. Your name is Jane? You are the businessman. Lift your hands where you are. Just lift it there. Lift your hands where you are. I said keys were given to people earlier on. The Lord is asking me to stretch my hands on you. And everyone who relates to this miracle too, may they receive it. I release an anointing upon you right now. Right now. Everyone who relates to this, in the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, you need wisdom, you need strategy, and you need connection. These three things, these are the things you came for. I release upon you grace. Don't be confused. Things are about to turn around in your life. Come. You need a helper. Somebody helped you, you did not thank him. You didn't thank him and this thing has affected you. Doctor. Doctor. I'm seeing a doctor. I don't know if you saw this. Please come, sir. I want to speak to you, sir. Sorry, I'm having to call you. But the Lord is saying, I should tell you, is going to come very fast. Go and write it down. This is what the Lord is saying, I should tell you. Even me, I don't understand what I'm saying. But the Lord is saying, I should tell you, is going to come very fast. It will bring three things. One, envy. Number two, I see your superiors angry with you. And the Holy Spirit is ministering to me. And he's saying it is because this kind of speed is not common. Koinone, I want you to witness this thing and write it. You will see it happen. Sir, I pray for you. Shade, you are a witness to what God is doing to your husband. God is going to give him such a dimension of speed. Sir, this will start from now till June 2017. You will see speed that will surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, do you know why you are stranded? Only one reason. You violated the law of honor. The law of honor. This is not just witchcraft. Don't, don't act as if you don't need people. You always need them for your business to rise. Huh? Why am I seeing piles of clothes? What do you do? I sell clothes. You sell clothes. Honor is what you have violated. Hold my hands. Let your business grow now. Go and excel. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. What is Abba? So go to Abba too. You go to Abba yes, sir. to buy clothes there. Yes, sir. But favor has closed there. Yes, sir. The person who used to help you, something happened between you and him. Yes, sir. You didn't honor him. He was very fair to you. Huh? Yes, Let me just tell you the truth. That's why I say it's the law of honor. Yes, sir. After I pray for you, he's yes. going to call you. Amen. The business will start again. Grace for you. I'm not revealing. I'm making it happen. This is not revelation. The word will make it happen. I place the word of God upon your life. And I declare that things will change. In Jesus' name. Why are you here? What's this? Project. Project. What are you doing? I want to run this school. Huh? You love children. Huh? And you want to teach. I'm seeing you doing something with a blackboard. Huh? Blackboard. Yes. Ah, you are strong. You want to establish a school. That's what I'm seeing. Nursery school, primary school, secondary school. Yes. That's what you want to do. Who told you it cannot be done? Huh? It can be done. You believe that? Hold my hands. Go and honor somebody who is already in having a school. And God will open that door for you. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, we are going to pray for the sick. Please listen. I want, this is the last miracle service for the year. I want everybody to receive. There will be such a heavy mantle transfer after the prayer. I just want us to in the next few minutes to finish here so i want you to please cooperate with us i pray for you you are all blessed in jesus name now please listen all those who are sick in this venue listen please this venue and uh the the overflow by the roadside i want you to just move to the front of your projector the projector screen all of you who are trusting god for a healing miracle no matter how many you are we will pray for you that's why we are here those outside move to your projector screen outside now listen 
part of those outside can come in not everybody a few of them maybe at the back you can come in then those trusting god for miracles here for you and your loved one now please come up come up quickly come up believing god come up believing god we want to do a thorough work tonight please we want to do a thorough work tonight this is what will happen now those outside is okay for those coming outside um pastor jakes pastor jakes will help me handle the one by this pro, uh, the projector stand outside and then a jimmy will go outside please guys let's trust god for grace for people to really get miracles hold on please people need let, let me just pray with you guys let's let's do a thorough work father grace in the name of jesus let your healing power flow let that healing grace lord in the name of jesus let it work let that healing grace be at work let there be results in the name of jesus please come pastor alpha come benga promise michael come all these hands i will tell you where to in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ grace for you let there be a very thorough results thorough results Thorough results, thorough results, thorough results. In the name of Jesus, thorough results. Pastor, um, you are Michael. Please, you can go outside and help Jake's. Um, Benga, you and Promise, you can go outside there with a Jimmy. Please, just go outside. Let's see. I will try to handle the ones here um, very, very fast. We need so many more people. By God's grace. Pastor Femi, come, 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 come. You are here and you are hiding. Come. Come and hold my hands. Let that anointing come upon your life and then you will help me here. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So he will help me here. Jesus, we release your healing power all over this place. Listen, please. For all those who are here, please listen. By the grace of God and it's not pride. God has given we a healing ministry. God has given us grace. Please be patient. We are going to hurry up if i don't mention your case don't worry i'll just lay hands on you i want us to cover grounds as much as possible i would have just prayed for you but that's not the instruction god gave us maybe if the ministry becomes too large we can pray but now i want to lay hands on everyone there are people with cancers there are people with all kinds of things just trust god worship team please just create the atmosphere for us if you are tired maybe the media can play something a worship song so that you rest too especially if you want a healing miracle come lay your hand on your stomach father you heal her in the name of jesus thank you jesus lift your voice if if they are if the worship team if you're tired then the media can play something a worship song let's be very fast please as soon as i lay hands on you i want you to believe god and go back thank you jesus let there be miracles now those of you who are hold on those of you who are seated please i permit you to put on your phone call your loved ones whatever their requests are i want to pray this is our last miracle service for 2016. anything that has not been done that must be done before december 31st i want you to write it call your loved ones those online submit your request we are all going to pray thank you jesus go ahead you will do a miracle, a miracle today. Thank you, Jesus. Miracle worker. You are a miracle worker. Jesus. Come and do a miracle, a miracle today. You will do a miracle. Restoration. A miracle. Restoration. 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 Miracle. Now. 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 You are a miracle worker. Come and do a miracle. A miracle today. You will do a miracle. A miracle today. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Hey. Miracle walking God. Your name is Yahweh. Oh, your name is Yahweh. Oh, your name is Yahweh. Hey. Now you are a miracle walking God. Your name is Yahweh. 
over your body this thing everywhere how long one year it just started coming hold my hands let it go now I cost the spirit responsible for this now let her go be healed now this wicked thing it disappears from your skin and leaves your life forever it is done darling God bless you your name is Hey, your name is Yahweh. Hey, miracle working God. Your name is Yahweh. Oh, your name is Yahweh. Mama, say after me, I curse every witchcraft. I curse every witchcraft. From the village, from the village, over my life, over my life, in the name of Jesus, in the name of that's where your problem is coming from. But I pray for you, in the name of Jesus, let there be a miracle by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Ah, Mama, something is leaving you in the name of Jesus. I command that spirit to leave you. You're with her. Help her, help my mom, please. You need favor in your life and you need speed. These two things. You need favor and speed. Ah! The anointing is still on our mother. Favor and receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Go ahead, guys. Your name is Yah. Oh, your name is this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God our man of God Apostle Joshua Salmon and that is I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him 
that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.